in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you're welcome to another spirit filled message on fifty centric message if you're new to this channel I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted unto you and then God is going to visit you your way thank you for watching be blessed grace some of these little spiritual principles, they are so simple that many people trivialize them. When there was need for bread, it took two loaves and five fish. Am I correct? And he lifted it up. What did he do? He gave thanks. The principle of thanksgiving is the principle of multiplicity. Anything you thank God for multiplies in your life. Now, I know many of you have heard this, but for you, it's not yet a revelation. You tell, wow, nice word. I'm telling you, anything you thank God for has the capacity to multiply in your life. You often said, when you thank God for his finger, you will see his hand. When you give him thanks for his hand, you will see him. Hallelujah. But many of us are not grateful. Many of us are not grateful. We refuse to see what God is doing in our lives. You pass a road and you watch an accident there and just smile. And you fail to see that it would have been you. In one minute you would have been it. And let me tell you the world would have continued going. People would just cry for two weeks and that's all. I know God is faithful. The psalmist says, if the Lord has not been on our side, now may Israel say. We have piles of people inside and outside and we have not had one record of bond blast. One. One. That a car drove in here to blow people up. We have seen the faithfulness of God. Are you listening to me? In the midst of all of the crisis and everything that has happened, there has been a covering of the Most High. Not because we are better. There are many churches that were taking communion and were praying while bombs blew in their churches and killed prayer warriors. Hallelujah. This is a mystery that many of us do not know. Thanksgiving. That's why many mothers are blessed because they know how to give thanks. While they are washing the plates, they give thanks. When you see where you were by January and where God has brought you now, you will give him thanks. Hallelujah. Many of you came here with all kinds of complex, all kinds of inferiority, all kinds of oppression, demonic sicknesses every kind of thing but see what God has made out of your life who would have known some of you are leaders today I choose to see your faithfulness oh God we watched a documentary last week how God took us this was the whole of Koinonia before he and I I mean just about this crowd but see what the hand of God has done. Go on our Facebook page and see the wonder-working power of the Spirit. Go across the campuses in this nation and families and see the awe-inspiring things that the Spirit of God is doing through our teachings. It's easy for you to sit down and laugh and say, hands grew out, legs grew Try it. Just do it. It's easy for you to watch the way we do ministry stresslessly here. No burden on you to bring any, no cajoling you. Every time you come and everything is done in excellence. It's easy for you to see the favor of God and trivialize it. 
Many times you don't know the power of God's gift in you until you watch others who don't have what you have. I have seen pastors struggle in ministry as if God didn't send them. I have seen people cry. I have seen members languish and lament and weep and say, Lord, won't the word at least work for me? There's no week you have come that there's nobody to give testimony to the glory of God. Do you see these things or are you still blind? Lord, I choose to thank you. I started thanking him when I could not heal a single sick body. At least I thanked him that I could preach. No manifestations, no miracles, no nothing. But there was a harvest of salvation. And I said, Lord, I thank you because this is a sign I'm going far. And God said, you mean you are thanking me for this small? I said, Lord, I said, son, you have not seen anything yet. Then another dimension opens up. And I say, Lord, I return thanks. And God says, do you need to? I say, of course. I'm not stupid. I know that I must return thanks. The Bible says Jesus was passing and he saw ten lepers. And they beckoned on him to heal them. And he said, all right, get up, go and show yourselves to the priest. The Bible says, as they went, they just found out that they were healed. The Bible said Jesus was passing, but only one came back. And when he came back, he saw Jesus still waiting there. I thought the Bible said he was passing. What was he waiting for? And when that one came, he said, were they not ten of you? Where are the other nine? Some of you here are among the other nine. Lord, my parents have started giving me money, but it's just 30,000. When will they increase it? <laughs> Lord, I've gotten this job, but oh, just 50,000. How much can 50,000? Until you hear the testimony of someone who has waited for 10 years without a job, then you will know he is faithful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, when will my own husband come? It's only married men that are coming. Wait till you hear the ladies oh, who no man even has cows. Only ladies tell her, how are you? Learn to see what God is doing and respond in thanksgiving immediately. Don't organize and shift your thanksgiving. And say, oh, no, no. This is not my message tonight. Hallelujah. Be seated, please. God bless you. Say after me, thank you, Jesus. Say one more time, thank you, Jesus. Praise God. We began a series on the full gospel. How many of you were blessed two weeks ago? Powerful, powerful teaching. You will be blessed tonight again in Jesus' name. Now, in 10 minutes, before we get to the main teaching, I want to teach on the power of testimonies. The Lord asked me to do this in 10 minutes, very quickly. The power of testimonies. Hallelujah. This morning, while I prepared, I just sat down, just writing and going through my notes. And suddenly a vision was opened before me. And I saw a release of angels. They were looking like horses. But they were also looking like human beings. And they were running with such speed. And then I said, Lord, what is the meaning of this? And I just had in my spirit, watch. And I kept looking. And then I noticed that they were holding something like vapor. You know how spiritual things are. All of them were holding things like vapor. And then one was holding something like a measuring tape. I mean they were running at supersonic speed. And the Lord told me that 
this vapor, or it looked like vapor, I had the scripture, if the cloud be full of rain, I said, Lord, what is this? Rain is this way, but I'm seeing angels holding vapor with that speed. And then I had a loud voice. I will hasten my word to perform it. And God told me that Koinonia is entering a dimension of the performance. The performance. The demonstration of the power of God's word. I don't tell you anything until God speaks to me. I'm not one of those people that stand on stage and talk jargons. I believe when I hear the voice of God, the performance. Hallelujah. And I saw a vision. You know, I love saying things before they happen because there, are, there will be many doubting Thomases. But then when it happens, I saw on this stage testimonies. I saw a line of people reaching down there. I said, Lord, what is this? And the Lord told me there will be an eruption of testimonies that will make people fear. To the point that many people will even start speculating that in our, something is, this is not normal. I'm saying it, write it. You will see it. Testimony. And so I said, Lord, why has it not happened? Why now? And the Lord told me something. He said, my people are not thankful. This is why we took our time. Listen carefully. The Lord told me, he said, you are grateful, but you are not thankful. Hallelujah. And then he asked me to share the power of testimony. This is why we took our time to give thanks. Psalm 22 verse 22. It's just a 10 minutes teaching quickly please. Psalm 22 verse 22. Lord we believe your word. Every time you speak you have the ability to perform. We believe your word. Psalm 22 verse 22. Anybody there? Loud reader. No one is there. Can we have someone in front? Anybody as loud as you can? Thank you, sir. I will declare your name unto the brethren. In the midst of the congregation, will I praise thee? He said, I will declare your name to the brethren. In the midst of the congregation, will I praise you? Hallelujah. A testimony is, this is with respect to the church, the Christian context. Honoring the Lord. The act of honoring the Lord by bearing witness to others about his work in your own life. An act of honoring the Lord by bearing witness. About his works in your life. It's an evidence. It's proof. That God is at work. Hallelujah. He says I will. Declare. Your name. Before the brethren. The family of faith. Hallelujah. He said before God's congregation. Testimonies are very very important in the life of the believer. Very, very, very important. Hallelujah. I'll give you four benefits of testimonies very quickly. Number one, testimony brings glory and honor to the name of the Lord. As seen in Psalm 22 verse 22. Honor and glory. Every time you stand on stage to testify of the things that God has done in your life, you bring honor. You bring glory. The congregation sitting will see and say, God is truly mighty. The Lord in the midst of his people. Mighty. Doing wonders. That the name of his son Jesus is being lifted. 
you bring honor and glory. And the Bible says, listen, if I be lifted up, he said, I will draw all men. And the way God is lifted up is that he lifts the vessel that lifts him. Are you listening to me? John 17 verse 1. He said, now the hour has come, glorify now thy son, that thy son may bring glory to you. So the son is first glorified, and then the father is glorified in the son. Every time you give God glory, every time you testify, you create a platform to honor the Lord in the congregation of God's people. Number two. Testimonies prove that God can be trusted and that his word is true. This is so important. We live in a generation of skeptics. Amazing. It used to be scientists and philosophers alone. But right now, all kinds of people, including young people, how are we sure that Titan works? How are we sure that these miracles are real? How are we sure that these testimonies are not made up? How are we sure that somebody was not giving money to testify? How can armed robbers shoot somebody and the bullets are bouncing back? Don't do film trick for us on stage. Skeptics. When a living witness testifies. See, it's one thing for you to see someone on TV or hear about a testimony in an article. It's one thing for you to see someone that you know. Hallelujah. When God's servant, Pastor Jake's, was healed and God turned his genotype. Many people just knew that ah, this is not joke again. But if we had said it here, some of you would just laugh. You say, All these men of God, they think we are children, they just stand on stage and speak nonsense. Testimonies prove that God can be trusted. Say after me, God can be trusted. Psalm 22, verse 24. Same chapter 24. Anybody? He said, For he has not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted. Of the afflicted. Neither had he hid his face from him. Neither had he hid his face from him. But when he cried unto him. But when he cried unto him, he heard. He heard. So testimonies encourage the people to know that God, your God, because there are many kinds of gods. River State, bottle of Fanta. Right, Bishop? Bottle of Fanta is a God to somebody. So when you say God, Jesus said to know you, the only one and true God. Testimonies prove that God can be trusted and that his word is true. Romans 10, 11. I have 10 minutes for this teaching. Romans 10, 11. You must get this. Romans 10, 11. Saith, For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth, on him, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Shall not be ashamed. Say, I believe in God and I will not be ashamed. Say one more time, I believe in God and I will not be ashamed. So testimonies prove that God's word is alive. Jeremiah 1, verse 12. He said, I am a lad. He said, son of man, what seest thou? He said, an almond tree. He said, you have seen correctly. For I am a lad and active, amplified. Watching over my word to perform it. Number three. Testimonies act as a seal to the miracle that has been received. This is very important. Look at me. Have you seen people get certain miracles and lose it? Have you, have you, have you heard about that? Have you, have you read books, How to Receive and Maintain Your Miracle? I've seen a lot of people that receive miracles and lose it. You see, the purpose of miracles is not just a showmanship. It's to give God glory. Hallelujah. It means if God is not glorified in your miracle, it was wasted. Hallelujah. Luke 17 from verse 11 to 19. The Bible says, that was, that's a parable of the ten lepers. That one returned back 
and gave thanks. And what happened to him? The Bible says Jesus told him to go that he would be made whole. Look at me. Nine were healed. Only one was made whole. Let me tell you what that means. That the people, the leprosy left them but the hands didn't grow back. So healing. The leprosy did not destroy them further. Alright? But that one person came back and all his fingers, all of it came wholeness. So, testimonies act as a seal. Every time you stand before God's people and say the cow would have capsized but God kept me. Demons are standing from where they are standing and watching. It's a seal because God's people have had it. You have committed God's integrity further in your life. God will not let you come and testify and go back with a disappointment. Are you listening to me? You put pressure on God to preserve that testimony because you have declared in the congregation of his people. And God knows that by these two immutable things, he cannot lie. Are you listening to me? A testimony is not what will happen. A testimony is what has happened. He said, I will declare your works. Are you getting blessed? You see, many of you have robbed yourself of new dimensions because you have refused to see. And let be, there are many of you, if you would write the testimonies that God has given you this year, many people would have been born again as a result of your testimony. Many people would have been healed as a result of your testimony. Number four, the last reason. And this is very powerful. Very, very powerful. Revelations 9, 19 verse 10. Revelations 19 verse 10. Revelations 19 verse 10. And Please I listen. fell at his feet. And I fell at his feet. To worship him. Okay. And he said unto me, See thou, do it not. I am thy fellow servant. And of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus, worship God for the testimony of for Jesus the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Listen, let me explain this mystery. Oh, I pray God will open your eyes. He said the testimony of Jesus is what the spirit of prophecy. This means every time you testify of Jesus, are you listening to me? You create an atmosphere for a duplication of that miracle in your life again and in the life of another person. It says testimonies about Jesus, they are prophetic in nature. That means they have the capability of replaying themselves in the future. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So when David stood before Goliath, don't think David was just laughing. He was a man like every other person. And he looked and he drew from the archives of his testimony. He said, the one who delivered the lion, come on. The one who delivered the bear. He began to encourage himself with those. He was prophesying. He said, the one who did it in the past. I, I want a replication of that testimony in the future now. The testimony of Jesus. This is why sometimes you hear us say the things that God did in the past because we expect him to reproduce it again. Hallelujah. The testimony of Jesus. There are many of you, the last time you received a certain testimony, that was the last time you had it. You did not maximize the testimony as a prophetic ladder to launch yourself to a new realm. Take seriously what I'm saying. It's very powerful. Many of you refuse to come and give testimony and say, I don't want to sound proud. But you see, whenever we say write prayer requests, you don't hide it, do you? You write all your prayer requests. Life partner. Job. I'm struggling with this habit. This and that. You are quick to write your requests. But you are slow. You say, should I testify? Should I not? And then you find out that for a very long time, there's no reproduction of testimony in your life again. There are, have you seen certain people again and again on stage? You haven't tired of them. Every time you see them, you see this brother again. You are laughing at him, but he, he is always coming back. Are you not seeing the principle? 
notice, no, I, I'm, I'm being very honest here. Do you notice that there seems to be a repetition? You see a brother comes to give a testimony about the faithfulness of God in the family. Oh, God opened up a door. God did this. And you laugh at him. And next week again, you see him. And you are laughing and mocking and you sit down there, you are angry and say, God, why won't you visit me? God said you did not honor me. The purpose of the testimony that I gave you was to encourage someone. Every time you are standing and you say, I had a lump and the lump disappeared. Somebody who just came for koinonia with a lump say, are you joking? You mean lumps can disappear? The testimony of Jesus. You are creating an atmosphere for that same miracle to be reproduced. And the person will say, I had this testimony. I'll never forget the testimony of Steve Strings. When it was time for, for um, admission, first list came out. His name was not there. This was his, the story he told me. Second list came out. His name was not there. Hallelujah. Then we went for service in Kwangila, living place. And he had someone someone testifying that he went around Senate seven times and when the second list came out, he got his admission. What happened? Steve said, that is it. The spirit. The testimony of Jesus. Steve String said he went around Senate for this, waiting for the third list and when the third list came out, his name was there. You see, when you testify you don't just tell people what God has done. You tell them what you did that brought the result. So somebody will look and say, ah, so God is faithful. Hallelujah. A job opportunity came and two of you were there and maybe you sacrificed it for somebody else. Then a greater job came. Somebody will now learn a principle from it. Are, are you following me now? I will declare the name of the Lord before my brethren. In the midst of the congregation will I praise you. Psalm 22 verse 22. Never forget this scripture. I choose to be thankful. When you are not thankful, you will keep getting angry at those who are testifying and say, why are they boasting? Are they lying? God bless them. What do you want them to say? Keep quiet like you are doing and stop the Lord from being glorified. Someone comes and says, God, open a door for our family. God, wipe the tears of my mother. God, wipe the tears of my father. And people, see, every time you see people testifying, don't just get angry and say they are bragging. You don't know where they were before the miracle came. Hallelujah. The Bible says, rejoice with them that rejoice. When you hear a testimony, don't just look and say, this person says, you are always talking. Why don't you celebrate and say, Lord, I rejoice with this person. The same God who did it for Sister A. The same God who did it for Sister B. The same God who did it for this family. At least I know this family when they used to go to the well to fetch water. Now they have their own house living in a bomb. I know this woman who was barren for eight years. Now see how with children. I rejoice. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So I want to encourage you because the Lord told me that many people are grateful but we are not thankful. That's why I decided to take these few minutes to teach you. Because you see, every time God rebukes a ministry is the leaders that are to be blamed. Hallelujah. If I don't teach you, there's no, God cannot blame you and hold you accountable. When he fell, who did God go to? Was he blind? Didn't he see Eve? Said, Adam, what happened? Adam said, the woman. Oh, may I not say the people. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Say, Lord, I receive grace. I receive courage. I know that many of you, many of you are ashamed. You are just saying, I, I don't speak English very well. Who cares? Say it in house, huh? Or say it in your language and call an interpreter. Oh, yes. Who, who paid your transport to come here that will eye you? Who was there when you were crying? Speak whatever you can speak and give God thanks. See, don't put yourself under unreasonable, ridiculous pressure. We are excellent people, not stupid people. Are you listening to me? 
Don't come and say, see my shirt, this material that I bought, Sam. Everybody knows. It has been lying down in Sabodi. It's me that came and carried it. Now I want to come and stand and disgrace myself. People worry about all kinds of useless things. And that's why they don't testify. My Yvonne has been there for how many years? They asked him my beard. He said, I will declare your name before the brethren. Hallelujah. We're going to pray before we go to the teaching tonight. Say, Lord, I receive grace. Grace. Go ahead and pray. Make sure you are praying. Kapa Lakota Silamaya. Say, Lord, I repent for trivializing your works in my life. I repent for trivializing your works. I thought you would be arrogant if I testify. But right now, Lord, I know that I've been robbing myself and robbing other people of the opportunity for seeing new dimensions. Go ahead and pray. Say, Lord, I receive grace to be faithful. My testimony. I now know it will bring you honor and glory. I now know that it will prove to men that you can be trusted and that your word is true. I now know that it will act as a seal to my miracle. I now know that it will create an atmosphere for that testimony to be duplicated in my life and duplicated in the life of others. Go ahead and say, Lord, I receive grace. According to Psalms 22 verse 22. Never forget it. This is the anchor scripture. Psalm 22 verse 22. That I will declare your name before the brethren. Your praise before the congregation of God's people. I refuse to be ungrateful. I develop a healthy Christian culture. The Bible says, and they overcame them by the blood of the lamb. And the words, your words of testimony have an overcoming ability in the spirit. Lord, as a house, we pray. We will not just be grateful, but we'll be thankful. From today, oh God, we make it a point of duty to testify, to rejoice, to notice the things that you are doing in our midst. And Lord, we'll give you praise. Father, we release you to keep doing more and bring a performance in every area of our lives. Keep praying one more minute. Say, Lord, I make up my mind. Some of you need to pray against timidity. Say, God has not given me the spirit of fear. Speak to yourself. Say, that devil of timidity. Or that lukewarm attitude that makes me trivialize what God is doing in my life and in my family. And in my business and in my ministry and in your academics, in your job, whatever. Lift your voice and say, Lord, I see what you are doing. And I let the congregation know you are faithful. I will not let unbelievers doubt your faithfulness. Whereas you are alive and walking. Pray. Pray for Koinonia. Say, Lord, as a family of faith, we will not keep quiet over what you are doing. Men may call it pride. They may call it arrogance. But we will declare that the nations will know you are alive. Our God is not dead. The wonder walking one is not dead. Say, Lord, I receive courage to create an atmosphere and let people know how God brought me out of the dunghill and set me upon a place of glory. How he changed the story of my family. How he made a way where there seemed to be no way. How that the words that were spoken here found expression in my life. For your glory, oh God. So I desire to give you the praise. And Lord, we will not relent. We take it as a kingdom culture. That from today as a family of faith. Like never before, we will declare your praises. We will not hide what you are doing in our midst. The Bible was written because men testified of what God did in their lives. They were not careful to write it. They said it as it is. They said the Red Sea parted. He gave them bread. He gave them quails. He made a way where there was no way. They did not hide it. Jesus multiplied bread. He didn't hide it. 
it was said, and today we are blessed. It is as a result of the testimonies of yesterday that we know today that Jesus Christ is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. We will not stop many from saying Jesus is the same. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I release grace upon you to declare the wondrous works of the Lord in the name of the Lord Jesus. And any door of testimonies that has been closed over your life because of your negligence, I pray that it be open tonight. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says, you put a new song in my mouth. A song of praise to our God. Many will see and will fear and put their trust in him. He said, you will put a new song, not an old one. A new song in my mouth. A song of praise to our God. Many will see. They will tremble and fear. And say, this God is a wonder-working God. And as a result, they will put their trust in him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Lord, we thank you. We're out of time. Quickly, let's get to the business of the night. How many of you were blessed? You received something? Do something with the word. It's not just they that hear. The, the Bible didn't say the NS creation is waiting for the manifestation or the explanation of the sons of God. It's waiting for those who will do. Put the word to work. Hallelujah. All right, let's look at our text quickly. We're, look, we're examining the full gospel. The whole truth about the priorities of God. Hallelujah. What was our text? Revelations 19. Hallelujah. For time's sake, I may not go there. I want to do a quick review for those of you who were not there. Please, everybody, try and get the teachings. They are powerful. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, talking about the bride of Christ, the Lamb's wife, he said the city was four square, equal in length, equal in breadth, equal in depth. No part, no exaggeration. Hallelujah. And we began to explain the fact that there has been, there are three problems with the Nigerian church. Number one, an exaggeration of certain truths and doctrines. Number two, uh, and on the emphasis of certain truths. And number three, a misplacement of God's priority. Hallelujah. And I began to teach how that on careful examination of the Nigerian church, there are seven major doctrines that make up the Nigerian church. Every church in Nigeria has one or more of these as their emphasis. Hallelujah. Number one is the gospel of grace, the grace message. We examine the grace message. Hallelujah. How that is founded upon Ephesians 2 verse 8. We are saved by grace through faith, not of works. And we explain how that the grace message seeks to explore the dimension of God that supplies grace for the journey ahead. And we said how that that doctrine is not wrong. It's very, very important. Ephesians 1, 2, and 3 tells us how that we have been seated with Christ. And that there is a dimension of God that opens us up to the grace of God. An act of his sovereignty has no business with what we have done or what we didn't do. Hallelujah. And we stress that the area of balance there is the fact that the word grace there is twofold. One is unmerited access. The second one is the ability to do. And that's where the church body has missed it. Hallelujah. And so we have a, an overstretching. And we do not bring the grace message properly in context. And I said that if the grace message is not balanced, it will produce a lazy and an irresponsible church. Because if you understand the grace message and it stands alone without other revelations giving it a richer meaning, you will feel that there's no need to pray. There's no need to fast. There's no need to study. After all, the race is not to the swift. The battle is not to the strong. So why must you prepare? The Bible says the horse is prepared for the day of battle. But safety is of the Lord. So why prepare the horse when safety is of the Lord? Hallelujah. 
He said, except the Lord watches over the city, the watchmen watch in vain. So if God is watching over the city, why will the watchmen be watching? The grace message in itself is not all there is. And if you leave it um, alone in itself, it will lead to a lot of errors. Hallelujah. Then we looked at the word of faith. Hallelujah. How that the Bible says, the word is nigh thee, Romans 10. It said the word is nigh thee, even in thy heart and in thy mouth, the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be, the word there is soteria, hallelujah. There are two basic words, there are many words really, but two basic words are translated saved or salvation. One is sozo. That has to do with healing, the manifestation of God's power with respect to his healing ministry. And the other one is soteria. Soteria means deliverance, prosperity, you name it. Hallelujah. And we examine that the word of faith seeks to bring the revelation to the body of Christ that there is a relationship between the creative power of the spoken word and what we get. Hallelujah. Genesis 1, and he said and he saw. He said and he saw. Ezekiel 37, I prophesied as I was commanded and I heard. Hallelujah. Mark eleven twenty three. 23, have the faith of God. If thou shalt say to this mountain, be thou removed and casted into the sea and will not doubt in your heart, but believe that the things which you sayeth will come to pass. You will have whatever you say. Hallelujah. Bible says the just shall live by faith. He said we should hold fast our profession of faith. So the word of faith seeks to open the body to the revelation that um, if you do not speak, the Bible says for by thy words you are justified and by thy words you are condemned. He said where the word of a king is, there is power. The power of words. The creative power of the spoken word. And then an addition to it came when a great father of faith Oral Roberts came to a point where he found out that you can engage the principle of Genesis 8.22. That as far as the earth remains, seed time and harvest. And so on shall not cease. And he found out that when you, when you add to your speaking, you tie a seed and tie it to the law of seed time and harvest. He saw that his results were amplified. Because he was engaging a principle that God had put. And it became the core teaching of the word of faith. How that you speak, you release the creative power of God's word. Hallelujah. And then you back it up with a seed, an expression of your, your heart and your sacrifice. And we examine that this is a dimension that is obtainable in God. The only challenge that the word of faith um, brings to the body if not handled carefully is that I said it last week because or week after week before last that because of the lucrative nature are you listening to me people come and sow seeds and I mean why will the man of God not enjoy this dimension of ministry if every Sunday you are sowing seeds and you are bringing I can use different scriptures to manipulate you into giving all kinds of seeds and so on and so forth We'll talk more on that in the gospel of prosperity. So, there has been a, an abuse of the manifestation. And people just come and they just talk it, talk it, talk it, talk it. And they don't do anything. They don't abide by the principles. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 28 verse 1, It shall come to pass, if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord, to observe and to do, not to speak, to observe and to do all that I commanded this day. That all of these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. Hallelujah. So there is an observance. Joshua 1 verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth. That's one. He said, but thou shalt meditate during day and night. That thou mayest observe to do. Observe to do all that is written therein. He said, then shall your ways be prosperous and you shall have good success. 
Joshua 1 verse 8. So we saw that it's not just enough to just talk, 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 talk. And say now that I've spoken and I've dropped a seed, everything is alright. It, it's not necessarily true. Hallelujah. That there are principles that we need to engage in. Right? So that was the summary of the word of faith. The tape is there. You can get it. The gospel of holiness. Hebrews 12 verse 14. Pursue peace with all men and holiness without which no man will see God. And I taught us that men began to explore certain dimensions of God because of the outbreak of carnality in the church. We had all kinds of things. The house of God being turned into a den of robbers, being turned into a place of joke and play, you know, and Christ is not exalted, it's not lifted. And certain people began to question and say, no, no, no. Because of the abundance and blessing that God was bringing to people, people forgot about God, you know, and they began to serve themselves, build empires for themselves. And the Bible says, and holiness, without which no man will see God. Hallelujah. And I buttressed on what holiness was, I think, let me just state it very clearly. I said holiness is twofold. Number one, holiness is the reality that is furnished in the human spirit as a result of the presence of the Holy Spirit. He's first called holy before spirit. Hallelujah. Scriptural proof, Exodus chapter 3. Moses sees a bush. He had been there all the time. A dirty bush. And is now on fire and will not be burned. And he comes near and the Lord tells him, remove your shoe for where you stand has suddenly become a holy ground. Nobody swept it. Nobody cleaned the leaves. The presence of God makes things holy. So when he comes upon you, that nature of holiness comes upon you. And then I told us that there is a second dimension. And this is where a lot of people um, do not, are not careful to observe the balance. Hallelujah. The book of Zechariah, the Bible talks about Joshua, the high priest. He said, he was standing before God, although he was a high priest, his garment was stained. And Satan came to accuse him. And what happened? The Bible says Satan was rebuked. Correct? But God did not leave him that way. He said he should remove the garment. So there is a doing. Are you listening to me? On account of what Christ has done, there is an enabling grace to walk. The Bible says, come out from among them and be ye separate and touch not the unclean thing. And we did examine certain things, how that living a life of holiness is cardinal to receiving the blessings of God. The Bible says, if all our hope is in this life alone, we are of all men most miserable. So we, we emphasized separating religion from holiness. And then we express the fact that the ultimate goal of holiness is not to compare people to people and say this person is doing this, this person is doing that. But that a life of true holiness brings you to a point where you have love for people. If you claim to be holy and you do not love God's people, you are a hypocrite. Hallelujah. I'm running because I, I need us to... Then we got to the teaching on Satan, demons, and deliverance. What is theologically called demonology. The study of Satan, the operation and the organization of the satanic kingdom. Hallelujah. I expressed to us that certain believers began to explore God. And this dimension was opened primarily by prayer and prophetic ministries. Because of their natural inclination to the realm of the spirit. Either through visions, through dreams, through prophetic encounters. Spending hours and days in the spirit. And so their eyes will be open and then they will have a lot of encounters. Hallelujah. And they began to find out that certain teachings that seem to trivialize some things about Satan and the knowledge of spiritual things um, were not exactly correct for the body of Christ. 2 Corinthians 2.11 is the anchor scripture. It said, for we are not unaware of the devil's devices. So the Bible tells us that um, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers against rulers of darkness and against spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places. Hallelujah. And great servants of God like Dr. D.K. Olukoya and CAC and great prayer ministries began to explore this dimension of God. And they began to tell the body, hey, 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 hold on. You people are trivializing too many things. I think you should reconsider one or two things. 
especially for the teaching that says, once someone is born again, you are in Christ, that's all right, nothing. But they found out that certain people who, although they were born again, although they were tongue-talking, they, they saw certain levels of demonic influences in their lives. And it began to raise questions. And these men saw in the spirit that there are pastors who were still suffering with things like masturbation, suffering with things like a gay lifestyle and the rest. He said, but these guys are anointed. They are healing the sick. That means that there is something more. Are you following me now? And they began to explore, to let us know that, look, oh, this initial salvation is only the beginning. It's not the end. That Satan can be able to leech in the souls of men and that it takes the same power to be activated in the solical realm to bring a man to that dimension that his spirit has experienced. And so we began to explore scriptures like 1 Peter 1 verse 9. He said, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your soul. And so we found out that the salvation of the spirit is not enough. The Bible talks about the salvation of the soul. Then it talks about the consummation of all things, the salvation of the body. Hallelujah. And so it led people to begin to study how that there can be certain things that can exist, like generational curses, spirit husband, spirit wife, ancient curses, and all kinds of things. And over time, these men that explored this dimension brought forth certain levels of results. There were people who were delivered from the power of darkness and brought genuine testimonies that they were involved in causing some of these things. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And then we, we see that Jesus himself, I told you four things characterize the ministry of Jesus. Number one, he preached. Number two, he taught. Number three, he healed the sick. Number four, he casted out devils. This was consistent. Mark chapter one, Mark chapter two, Mark chapter three. You read all through, you see it. He preached, he taught, he healed the sick, he casted out devils. In Matthew chapter 10, when he was sending the disciples, he sent them forth and he told them, he said, go, heal the sick, cast out devils, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, heal the sick, cast out devils. When he was reading his mandate in Luke chapter 4, from verse 17, when the scroll the book of Isaiah was given to him. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted, to set the captives free. When he looked in Luke 12 to the woman who was bowed, he looked at her and from the spirit he saw that this woman had been tied. And he said, woman, thou art loosed from your infirmity. That means that infirmity was a spirit. The Bible says when he came back from his transfiguration, with Peter, James, and John. He saw the disciples struggling with one man's child. And the guy was epileptic. And the Bible says Jesus rebuked a deaf and dumb spirit from an epileptic patient. The Bible never tells us the guy was not speaking. But Jesus looked and saw that there was an operation and he could detect the spirit that was at work. On his way to Gadara, the sea began to be boisterous. And we understand that it was not just water. It was the demons who were trying to make the journey futile. Because as soon as he crossed to Gadara, a madman was waiting for him there. The Bible says the guy was mad and he stayed in caves. Who told him Jesus was coming? The first people to greet him was the legion, the man and the legions of darkness. Hallelujah. And so we see that it would be stupid for you to assume that it's not necessary. All these things, people are talking about demons. No, 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 no. The ministry of deliverance is key to the church. The church does not know so much about the ministry of deliverance, either because it has not been taught properly or it has been exaggerated. This is why we are considering the full gospel. Are you following me? We stopped from there last week, so let's continue. Help us, Holy Spirit. Fact about Satan, demons, and deliverance. Now, it's not my goal to make you angry tonight, but if that happens, please, I'm sorry. Let me apologize before time. Hallelujah. Because this is a sensitive topic and we're going to talk about it. And I'm going to say a lot of things that may not be... Um, uh, I know there are different churches represented here. There are deliverance ministries represented here. Whatever it is, let's look at the word of God. These are not my opinions. Hallelujah. Facts about Satan. Number one. 
Satan was an archangel. He was a cherub, really. The Bible calls him the anointed cherub that covereth. They fell from their original estate and were judged according to revelations. There was war in heaven. And Satan, Lucifer, that was his name before the fall. The son of the morning, the Bible calls him. He was the cherub closest to God. An act of pride and rebellion got him to a point where he said, I will exalt myself above the stars of God. And there was war in heaven. The Bible says the dragon fought and Michael fought and he prevailed not and he was casted to the earth. And there was a lamentation, woe to the inhabitants of the earth. Because Satan had been cast to the earth. Hallelujah. And then he began to deceive man and so on and so forth. So number one, Satan is not omnipresent. He cannot be everywhere at the same time. Please deliver yourself tonight. Satan cannot be everywhere at the same time. Oh, Satan did this to me. No, it's not Satan. Hallelujah. Two, Satan is not omniscient. Satan does not know all things. Let me give you two scriptural proofs quickly. One from Old Testament, one from New Testament. When Moses was born, Satan had been scouting for the seed of the woman. He did not know exactly who the seed was. And he suspected it was Moses. So he moved through the heart of Pharaoh. And what happened? All the children were killed. That tells me there is a lot of experiment there. If Satan was omniscient, he will, knew ex he will know exactly. Is that correct? And then in, 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 in the New Testament, when Jesus was born, same thing happened. You see that? Move through Herod. So Satan is not, omni, is not omniscient. He's not, he doesn't know all things. That's not true. There are some things Satan does not know. Hallelujah. For instance, when we pray in tongues, there are some things Satan does not know. The Bible says, eyes have not seen. He didn't say human eyes. He said, eyes, any eye at all has not seen. Ears have not heard. Neither has it entered into the heart of any man. So Satan does not know what God has prepared for them that love God. It is exclusively the Holy Ghost. The way Satan knows the things that, that are about to happen to you is because of certain operations that happen in the realm of the spirit. For instance, an unusual manifestation of angels. When they saw the star, Satan said, something is happening somewhere. Start tracing the star. Hallelujah. <laughs> so for many of you who have been taught that Satan knows everything about me, it's not true. You may want to ask, so how do false prophets know certain things about people? It's a simple operation of spiritual laws. In this realm, we are bounded by three dimensions. In the realm of the spirit, there are more than three dimensions. Are you listening to me? And because of the existence of certain dimensions, you can tap into certain things, past, present, and future. These things are not necessary. They are not luxury in the realm of the spirit. And so by act of divination and sorcery, they can peep into certain dimensions of the future. And people can come in with some words. But it doesn't necessarily mean it's of God. Hallelujah. Moses threw his rod. He became a serpent. What happened? Pharaoh brought his own rod to and he became a serpent. Okay? Satan is not omnipotent. He's not all powerful. I beg you, believe this revelation. Satan is not all powerful. I need to preach this to you. Because I'm irritated at the emphasis that people have given, especially prophets. They talk so much about the satanic kingdom and how powerful Satan is and I was in the spirit and I saw this great beast. I'm telling you, you cannot imagine this beast was so powerful and the people are watching it as if they are in a cinema. That's it and he came and the people are, are running back. They say, you mean the demon came and you can't go back home again because in your mind you are imagining that mental picture. So how is the tale like? And we use all kinds of graphic images in church. And we say, do I walk through the valley? And the person is imagining a valley. And forever they keep imagining a valley, even in the daytime. Hallelujah. It is true that we shouldn't be unaware of Satan's devices. But what is it about Satan 
that is important to the church. Quickly, Luke 10, 18. Luke 10, 18. We're exploring the word. Luke 10, 18. Let me start from verse 17. And the 70 returned with joy, saying, Hallelujah. Have you opened it? I want you to read it. Are you ready? Want to read? And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us through thy name. Stop. He said, Even who? Are subject to who? Us. Say, Demons are subject to me. Say, demons are subject to me. The 70 came back and they were surprised. They said, ah, Lord, even the demons, we thought it's only, even the demons are subject to us. That means it wasn't only demons that were subject, because they say even. That means they were so, there was something else. Hallelujah. And Jesus tells us what that something else is. 10 verse 19. Or verse 18. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning. Do what? Satan is defeated. Say it after me. Satan is defeated. He's not being defeated. He's not going to be defeated. You must get this revelation. Satan has been defeated. So when we pray and when we declare God's word, what are we doing? We are establishing that victory in our lives. We are establishing it. Because Satan will not keep quiet. He will not give up. Although he's a defeated foe, he runs through and foe. Can I tell you something? Look up, please. It is possible for a man to be free of the attacks of Satan. There's no time I would have shown you where Satan himself gave a testimony in Job chapter 1. Satan came, the sons of God gathered, and the Bible says Satan was among them. And the Lord asked him, he said, where are you coming from? He said, to and fro proves that he's not omnipresent. Correct? He said, from moving to and fro the earth. He said, in the midst of your voyage around the world, did you ever come across a man called Job? He said, of course. And Satan said, I testify that I could not do anything about that man. He said, have you not blessed him and built a hedge round about? In other words, Satan tried through every means. And he said, I give up. And he was reporting Job to God. He said, it is true that a man can be so fortified that I did not penetrate him. So keep that teaching. That tells you that, oh, one day somewhere, no. It is possible. Jesus lived that kind of life. Say amen. amen. Say after me, Satan is fallen. 19. Oh, let, let's leave 19. We are coming back there. The ministry of deliverance. What is deliverance? Please look up comes from the word deliver. What does he mean to deliver? Ladies, what, is, what does he mean to deliver? Are you joking? What does he mean to deliver? It doesn't necessarily mean to bring forth. It means to take out of where the person is. It's not everything you bring forth. Some things leave. You don't bring forth demons. You bring forth miracles. You bring forth new levels. You cast out demons. Hallelujah. So, deliverance is um, the operation of the anointing of the Spirit or the operation of the Holy Ghost that separates a man from whatever challenge, whatever demonic influence or satanic predicaments that attempt to influence that person's life. By the name and the power of the Holy Spirit. It's called deliverance. Hallelujah. And the Bible says. Obadiah 1.17. Upon Mount Zion. 
there shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness. And because of the deliverance and the holiness, what will happen? The people of God will possess their possessions. That means between you and your possession, at times Satan will stand to block. But when there is that deliverance, deliverance does not necessarily mean taking a demon out of a man. Hallelujah. Deliverance means being saved, preserved, taken away from situations that will stop you from walking in the reality of what God has destined for you. Hallelujah. We see deliverance all over scripture. In Matthew 8 verse 16, the Bible says, and he casted out the devils with his word. Psalm 107 verse 20, he sent forth his word and his word he led them and delivered them from all their destructions. He sent forth his word. Hallelujah. So it's very, very important. I need you to know this. Demons exist. Satan exists. And there's all kinds of strata of satanic kingdom. What's their job? To thwart the plan and the agenda of God. The universal counsel of God. And to thwart the destinies of men. They use all kinds of things. Sickness. Failure, delay, defeat, everywhere. You just name it. There are numerous demons and spirits and all kinds of things. In one man, there was a legion. You can imagine. One man. A legion in one man. It tells you how many they are. But just when the servant was overwhelmed by the army, Elijah said, oh God, open his eyes that he will know. I hope you realize that Satan fell with one third of the angels. That means there's two thirds. For every one demon, one fallen angel, there are two angels that are alive and strong. And the Bible did not tell us God has stopped creating them. He said, for thou hast created all things. He said, they are and they were and are being created. God has not stopped creation. Are you listening to me? It is exclusively within his ability to keep creating for he upholds all things by the word of his power. Are you getting blessed? And so this is very important for you to know. Can you imagine? I thought we'd be able to cover so much. Okay. So the ministry of deliverance is not to be despised. There are many of you that have certain challenges and habits and things in your life. And you need the intervention of God. You need the intervention of the word. Listen to me. The primary tool of deliverance is God's word. Say God's word. Not prophets. Not mantles. Not, not pure water. Not anointing oil. Those things are prophetic symbolisms. Are you listening to me? We are not castigating them. If they are used with revelation, they can produce results. But I'm saying you need to realize, I've done a teaching about the word of God, the living logos. Please get the teaching. He casted out the devils with his word. Hallelujah. So how do we get free from the influence of demons? Oh, hold on. I need to tell you this. There are three levels of demonic operations and influences over the lives of people. Number one is what we call possession. Total control of that individual. That's what we get in the case of those who have sold their souls to devils. Sorcerers, certain witches who have made covenants with their, they've sold their soul literally. They are under the full weight and the influence of demons. They have become oracles. Hallelujah. The remedy for that, that level of acute possession in your spirit is new birth, salvation. Let me tell you something. No matter how much you lay hands and cast out devils from a man, if that person is not born again and he does not accept the lordship of Jesus Christ, you only wasted your time. 
I have found out that many deliverance ministries are not concerned about the salvation of the victims. They are just concerned about manifestation. Hold on, we are getting there. There is the doctrine of power and the charismatic move of the spirit. We are going to get there. There are many people who are just excited. And people just cough out all kinds of things. And the prophet is laughing, he's standing. King of kings and lord of lords. Two weeks again, you see the same person come back full of demons because Jesus gave us a mystery. He said when a demon leaves a man, what happens? He goes through arid regions looking for a place of refuge and not finding any. What happens? He says, let me arise and go back to my house. He called it his house. So that means that you have been delivered does not mean Satan will stop seeing that it's his house. As far as he's concerned, he went on sabbatical. He said, let me visit again and find out what is happening. He said he will come and find it swept, clean, but what? Empty. And the Bible says, behold, I stand and I knock. There is a vacuum that only Jesus Christ can fill. There are many deliverance cases that the solution is for the people to be born again. Hallelujah. I've led people to Christ and the moment they are confessing Jesus Christ, you see all kinds of manifestations, of course. Because light cannot dwell with darkness. Are you listening to me? So, don't just get excited every time you touch somebody and the person starts manifesting and say, hey, snake, hey, tortoise, hey, cobra, hey, this, hey, that, hey, giraffe, hey, this. Beyond those manifestations, is the person born again? If the person is not born again, the demons run away because of the light and the anointing of God. But the person leaves and they will come back. So we have people consistently struggling. All kinds of people, they are not born again. They are not willing to be serious with God. Again and again, the same people coughing out tortoises, coughing out worms, coughing out everything that they can cough out. Nobody will buy any buckets here for any woman. And I mean what I said. I mean it seriously. Nobody is buying any buckets for anybody. The demons can go out. We can vomit, we fart it. But we will not encourage that manifestation. The demons can go out. You didn't necessarily eat anything for them to cough. They can leave. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 4. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. You see the reason why I don't believe in all those carnal things? Because the Bible says it's not about carnal things. Jimmy gave us a story some years ago about, I think was it um, she, he came to set the captives free, what's her name? Rebecca Brown. She came for a deliverance session in Lagos. And when she came, she said, remember the story? She said, in the name of Jesus, every demon here, go. And then when she finished preaching, Nigerians were disappointed. The prayer people say, nah, this thing has not finished. Then the pastor came up. Say, madam, thank you so much for what you have done. But in Nigeria here, we believe in warming ourselves. More everybody stand up. Come on. And when they shook themselves, more say, hey, hey. So now this thing has happened. Now, of course, oftentimes, because of the activity that happens, you can't just sit down and say, Satan, I would really love you to leave. Do you mind? It doesn't happen that way. Hallelujah. It doesn't happen that way. Psalm 66. He said, through the greatness of thy power. He said, how awesome are your works, O Lord. He said, through the greatness of thy power will thy enemies submit themselves to you. It won't just happen because you can laugh. Through the greatness. Power must be, exact, must be generated in the spirit. Through the greatness of your power will the enemies submit themselves. 
You don't just come and say, Satan. The Bible says no man will enter a house and spoil that house without first doing what? Binding the strong man. So when you see us praying and say, Satan, get lost. Oedeko wrote a book called Satan, get lost. Many of you say, yeah, all these things are unnecessary. Okay. Praise God. How do we get free from Satan? James 4 verse 7. This is the major reason why Satan has access to the lives of people. Let's run. James. James 4 verse 7. Anybody there? Please. Hold on. Submit yourselves therefore. This is, this is God now giving us a recommendation through his servant. Yes sir. He says submit yourself therefore to what? To God. Hold on. Many people resist the devil and he doesn't flee. You know why? We don't complete that scripture. What's the first step? Submit yourself. He said come under his governing authority. Submit yourselves first to God. And then when that has been done, he said resist the devil and he will flee. You see where we have been missing it? Oh, Satan, I bind you. Oh, Satan, I bind you. Oh, Satan, I beg you. Oh, Satan, please, please, please. Oh, yeah, please, please. I, I will not shout again. Just go. There are many of you. Well, I don't believe here, but there are many believers suffering from all kinds of things. Many of you cannot sleep in the night. I told you I used to be oppressed by demons life story. As soon as I lie down to sleep, I would literally, spirit, they would just enter my room. Free flow. I don't know whether it was because of me or my unbelieving roommate. But I was also not a believer, you see. I, I mean, I was born again, but it used to be very bad. Every time it was evening, I, I would just know that this is, it was in court, Lontenis court. Light entered my spirit. Hallelujah. I found that scripture that said, I have given you authority. Luke 10, 19. This is Jesus speaking. Behold, I give you power over snakes. Come on now, snake spirit, over snakes. Thank God he was the first to be mentioned here. Scorpions. And how many? All. Say after me, all. Because for some of you, it's some. Over all the powers of the enemy. He said, and nothing shall by any means. You are English students and you went to school. What does any means mean? Any method. Any way. Through food. Through dream. If I have a dream and I ate, I sure know that it's God that gave me that dream. No devil will give me anything. But there are many of you that dream and you see all kinds of satanic things. And you laugh about it, but it's really satanic because you've not taken your ground. Let me tell you something. Take this thing seriously. Many of you have not taken out time to address some things in your life. You keep laughing about it and you say it's not serious. I warn the devil sins. I warn him sins. Hallelujah. You must take some time. Maybe this will be the week that you go and lock yourself alone. And say, Satan, men of God have been speaking to you on my behalf, but I want to talk to you by myself today. Let me tell you something. This is the first, no, well, it's not the first. This is the last time. Enough of that devilish oppression. And you don't just speak and say, because my name is Joshua. The word, it is written. It is written. Authority have been given unto me against principalities, against powers. And in the name of Jesus, I confront this devil. I confront this situation. Lift up your heads only gate. You need to settle some things in your life. Many of you just watch things happen. Things are not going right and you are just laughing. You just say, one day I know my God is alive. You will be very surprised. If you don't take a step, 
the Bible says the people saw Jesus Christ and they tore the zinc and said, we have given ourselves the date of miracle today. Are you listening to me? Some of you need to go and lock up yourself and find scriptures and end some things in your life once and for all. Say amen. There are many preachers who will not admit this. But you look at their lives and you see them being victims of certain things. Although they are preachers, although they are men of God, they can't look at a lady and go free. Lie, lie. They can heal. They can do everything. That you are a new creation in Christ, listen to me, that you are a new creation in Christ does not mean you stand and stand upon God's word. But let me tell you what I do not believe about deliverance. Listen to me. I can't be binding Satan every day of my life. There are more important things to do. It's not a sin. But it's a weight that can be done away with. There are many of us that all we think about is Satan. What he can do. I woke up this morning. I listened to a man of God. He said he went somewhere and before the meeting they bounded and casted devils. And then he was going to have a meeting with the leaders and they were bounding again. He, he called the pastor. He said, I thought we just did that some hours ago. Listen. Many of us have insulted God too much. We make it look like if you ask, God is helpless. Satan can bounce into your life any day, any time. Look up, please. Somebody moves on the road and matches a charm, correct? Did the person believe the charm will affect him? But the charm still affects him. So if Satan can veto somebody's faith and step in and God takes his reputation, somebody matches a charm without knowing and suddenly his legs start swelling. This is Satan. Making your faith nonsense. And then the Bible calls the word of God a more sure word of prophecy. And then we do it and say, just hold on. You don't know how Satan can come. I mean, this life. Don't insult my God. Are you listening to me? Don't insult my God. I believe I have taken many poisons in my life. We've gone from place to place. I've eaten everything they gave me. It's only when we get to heaven or one day God opens my eyes that I will see. I may not know how many people have taken my names to native doctors, shrines. I know I've seen it a number of times. <laughs> see, let me tell you something. Change your mindset. Tell your neighbor, change your mindset. Philippians 4 verse 8, finally brethren, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are, are lovely, whatsoever things are noble, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, what did he tell you to do? Think on these things. What are you thinking of? Many of us are angry with our roommates, angry with our friends. Your life has become madness because everything you see you see dust on your shoes, you look. You say, this dust, why is it on one side? Oh God, clean your shoes and move forward. Don't make God look like an idiot. He gave you authority. Regardless of what it is, you have authority. A lot of people come to cast out devils. Who are you? What is your name? When did you enter this body? What did you do this? They may not be, it may not be wrong, but it's a weight. I tell you the truth, it's a weight. If we spend, I, I've, I've seen meetings, we spend hours doing deliverance and we spend so little time teaching the word. A man of God is prophesying from morning till evening and then they just do a little exhortation of 20 minutes and the prophet said, now I need to move in my office and people say yes. They would die as a congregation. It's the word of God. He said, I found your word and I did eat them. 
Hallelujah. You empower the church by giving them the revelation of God's word that will set them above. Are you listening to me? So I have a serious problem with ministries that all they do, all they do, morning till night, all they do is just prophecy and casting out demons. Demons are rolling morning till night. Can the people be taught the word of God? Do you really believe in the power of the word? Now, I'm not saying there's no place. There is, we do that miracle service. But we spend three weeks doing what? Teaching you the word. It says you are clean through the word that I've spoken unto you. Sanctify them by thy truth. Thy word is truth. You must get to a point where you are full of God's word. Only God knows how many charm we have matched. Only God knows how many. They found a snake one time in my ceiling. And they called some people from ABU to come. Okay, I don't know who, who was around. They came and did the, 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 I didn't know they used jazz. I asked the guy, where is the, this thing for? This? He just brought out one thing and showed me. I said, hey, my man. I said, well, that shall never end. We'll see. The guy was disappointed. The guy was, that thing didn't work. Oh, it didn't work around my vicinity. It didn't work. The light shines in darkness. I said, because the guy swore he put that in. He said, we'll see that snake. In the evening, I saw the snake again. And God was letting me know that this thing that happened is drama. The guy vowed. The neighbor said that every time the guy comes, he's a popular guy. He calls the snake by their jars and the snake comes out. That guy called the snake they, from, they put all kinds of things. It didn't work. And I said, all right, Lord. St. Patrick casted out snake from Ireland. I just need it around my vicinity. Don't come back here again. Hallelujah. Do you believe this? I have given you authority. Let this enter your spirit. You are a bank of power. I have given you authority. Believe it. One of our ladies went to a native doctor one time. For whatever reason, I do not know. The guy said she should bring 30,000 and goat and other things. And then he gave her something to go and bath with. And when she went to bath with, it disappeared. She ran to him and said, ah, Baba, it has disappeared. Said, ah, there's trouble. And then she just said, she'll come and confess and meet me. When she met me, I said, go and tell the native doctor. I'm not going to pray for you first. Go and tell him. That Joshua Selman said he should check in the realm of the spirit and see the person talking to him. That if you ever harass you again, they will take his dead body out of his shrine. If you have not seen the burning bush, don't stand before Pharaoh. You will die like a chicken. Hallelujah. We have gone for crusades, men of God. And we have seen the wonder working power of God. You see us cast out devils after Koinonia. And I have a sound sleep given by God every night. If I'm awake, it's because I'm walking. If the devil wakes me, I won't wake up. I will ask him what is what concern Agbero will overlook. I won't quarrel him and say, ah, go, go. <laughs> Just please get out of my presence. I mean what I'm saying. Many of you say, keep talking like this. I'm, I've been saying this thing for years. Is it not true? I've been saying this thing for years. Please ask them. They will confirm it. Today we are flying on the wings of evil of, of eagles as if Satan does not exist. You think it's his goal for you to come here? Look at the salvations and the rest. So that devil that has been knocking your zinc, ask him, come down. Come down. Why are you disturbing me? He wants to put in you the spirit of fear. How do you react? Hey, no. Shakata bakato balakaya. God has not given me the spirit of fear, but the spirit of love, power, and of a sound mind. And you say, in the name of Jesus, I declare sound sleep this night by the power of the Holy Ghost. And you lie down and sleep. Don't go for a crusade and come back and start crying and say, hey, there's going to be a fight back. 
I said it when we were preparing for Pangshin Crusade, if you remember. I said, Satan has always wanted to kill you. He didn't just start liking to kill you on your way to a crusade ground. Let me tell you something. A trace of Satan's wickedness is seen in Boko Haram. They will kill anybody when they have the opportunity. That Satan has not killed you. It's not that he doesn't want to. He cannot. We travel all the time to different places. I've said it here. Even if Satan drives my car, I will go. I will tell him, take me to so 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 place. Ah, Josh, are you not afraid of Satan? This is the mindset I want to deliver you from. That mindset. Say, look at the statements you are making. They are hearing you. Oh, there was there was a confession. Now there was a. There are some people that used to come for koinonia. One occult person. He came and met me one time to confess. He's not around. They said they have been watching me for years. That's what he said. They said they watched me when I went to South Africa. While I was snapping with Kobus, they were watching. When I was having my retreat, he said, we watched you. For 72 hours, your eyes did not see daylight. We watched you when you were praying. Beginning to end. And I, my mind, I said, happy viewing. I asked him, no, I asked him a question. Listen, listen. Truth story. I think his brother may be here. I said, when you people come for Koinonia, what happens to you? He says, they hang on from a far distance and stand and watch because of the fire of God. How many of you remember the guy, Sadiq Ibrahim? Remember his story? Sadiq Ibrahim was outside. This guy slept in the graveyard for three days to collect the power of invincibility. Three days he was outside. When I stood on the platform here, what happened? He said, when he saw people falling, he looked and he said, yes, there's power in this place. He said, whether it's demonic power or whatever power, there is power. Because he has slept and he knows the equivalent of the sacrifice it takes to get that power. Let me tell you something, friends. Not all human beings are equal. There are terrestrial beings. There are celestial beings. Ask demons. He casted them with his word. Many of you have been watching demons fly freely in your family and you are just laughing. What are you there for? Say, I have authority over Satan. Hallelujah. Ah, we don't have time. But I really wanted to touch on the gospel of prosperity. I thought I'll be able to end tonight with the gospel of prosperity. nine o'clock already. Let me just see we didn't even do anything. Oh. Hallelujah. How time flies. So why do you sleep in some of your churches? 30 minutes you are asleep. And I'm looking at the time. I don't I'm not mocking anybody but I'm saying nothing can replace lack of fire. Not your suit. Not eloquence. Not shouting. Because I've seen a devil you just talk and threw out a Holy Ghost night with you. People are wide awake. And I've seen other people jacking and the other person is sleeping. It's until the pastor comes and says, I, I said this! And again, the guy wakes up. And he shouts alone, yes! And they say, yes, for what? <laughs> Hallelujah. That's why we pray. We don't want a fireless ministry. Hallelujah. Have you received something tonight? The word of God is supposed to make you powerful. I want you to leave here tonight with the revelation that you have authority over devils. If you don't believe this, I don't know how to help you again. We have magnified Satan too much. It's too much. It's even irritating. Too much. Many of us have the list of all kinds of demons in our books. How many names of God have you written in your book? Jesus defeated Satan. 
I was not there, but his spirit bears witness that he was not lying to me. And I believe it. Do you believe it? Saints of God, do you believe it? See, because we need to bring this issue of Satan and demons, we need to clarify it once and for all. Can you get angry with yourself and use this week to pray and say, Satan, I'm ready to stand upon the word of God. See, many of you go to Satan and when, when you get there or to wherever, you now start saying, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, leave. What is your scriptural basis? Say after me, it is written. That must be, there must be, the Bible says, Isaiah 40 verse 41. He said, present your case, said the Lord. Bring forth your strong reasons. Bring forth your strong reasons. Present your case. We used to call in, in the campus then a, a court, long tennis court. What do you do in the court? It wasn't because they used to play basketball there. It was a place where we settle issues through the power of God's word. Those days you see people, somebody will come with his Bible and lie down first for two hours searching the scripture while he has he has, get, he has gotten it, he will line it up. He said, now hear me, Satan, it is written. There are many of you who are dying of many things. Satan is having a free ride through your life. He says like that, in our families like that, when will it end? Hello? When will it end? He said, next miracle service will jump and come. And the demons stand there and wait. And you come and then they finish. They, they can't come here. I assure you, they won't come here. And then when you go back there, what happens? There are many of us, the, your own issue is you have refused to be born again. Every time they talk about being born again, you just say, no. My name is Joshua. And Joshua is the Hebrew form, Jehoshua. It's the same as Jesus. I'm Jesus' namesake. And you will not get born again. The Bible says, in the day that you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. That's the problem with a lot of people. Or oh, you are born again, oh, but you are not on fire. You are lukewarm. Satan can ride in and out of your life. Prayer life, zero. Word life, zero. Obedience to God's principles, zero. Bishop Oedeko always says something that I love. He says, no matter how mad a man is, he will never enter fire by mistake. No matter the guy is mad, they say, give way. If he sees fire, he will move this way. No matter how mad a man is, he knows fire when he sees it. And the Bible says, he maketh his angel spirits and his ministers, what? Flames. Like Reinhard Bonke, he says, evangelism by fire. This is not just the kind of fire we preach today. That one is the real fire. Real fire. Say, I'm on fire for God. Say it, I'm on fire for God. See, you must be too hot for Satan. I pity the person who calls my name in a shrine. The, the shrine person will die for nothing. It's not that I kill the person. It's the natural consequence. I'm telling you. I believe in the power of the Holy Ghost. God cannot be lying. A man of God went for a meeting and they, when he came in the morning, he saw that they caught chicken. No, no. He just entered his room and came out and he saw chicken. He said, who dropped this chicken here? And then he smiled. He said, thank you, Jesus. He had been fasting and he had been praying. True life story. The guy was so happy. Said, yes, Lord. Once again, God used the stupidity of witches to answer the prayer of his servant. The guy pieces that in and he ate it. I'm telling you. Yes, he did. He ate it. He gave thanks. The Bible says give thanks. And eat. We are going to pray. He gave thanks. Archbishop Benson Idahosa. He went to preach somewhere. Wild man on fire. When he came out, he saw a calabash. 
He just clapped his hand. He carried the calabash. He said, who dropped this calabash? His fear was for the person, not for himself. He said, who dropped this calabash? Everybody kept quiet. He said, I'm begging now. Who dropped this calabash? Because if I release it to fall down, the person will die. And that was how he released it. As soon as he dropped, the person died there. Hallelujah. I had a testimony that happened some months ago. I think a thief came to steal in Canaan land. And he was hiding behind a tree. And Oyedeko was speaking and he shouted from the altar and the man fell down there and died. Instantly. Instanta. He died there. Say I'm too hot for Satan. Say it. Some of you are afraid of saying it. I have given you authority. That's why we smile our way to the miracle service every week. No pressure whatsoever. No pressure whatsoever. There are many men of God when they come, you see them sweating. When they see some kind of uh -uh. Bishop Oedeko had one guy who was harassing people and he told the guy, enter the car. He drove with him to one place by, I think, 12 or 1 a.m. in the night and told the witch to come out. He told him, come out. He said, now, anything I tell you to do, do it. It's only me and here. The Satan is called the prince of darkness. Here is dark, me and you. He said, now lie down. And the guy lay down. He said, where is he? He said, he cannot come here. He said, as long as you are in the world, you are the light of the world. As long as you are in the light. As long as you are in the world. Believe this, brothers and sisters. Otherwise, your journey will be very long in life. Believe this. I refuse to believe. Nobody will preach me into exalting Satan above Jesus Christ. No, sir. See, let me tell you. I have seen demons in the spirit. Are you listening to me? Don't you think I'm just talking? Oh, I've seen demons. And they are intimidating. When you see the strong, there are certain demons that are about 32 feet. 32 feet, you see them. Many of you don't pray, so you don't even know what I'm talking about. You only share the grace and roam around making noise. When David saw Goliath, he said, Goliath, I come to you in a name. The Emir of Zazo some years ago, they could not admit one guy in NDA because he was too short. There's the height and he was too short. And they said, we can't take you. You pass the test. And the guy was angry and they, they, they brought the case to the Emir. And the Emir said, go and tell the commandant that the Emir of Zozo has added the height of this boy. And they took him in. Come on now. Talk of, talk of, con say connection. That's how God added the height of David. Goliath said, am I a dog? He said, hold on, you will know. He said, let me tell you what I will do to you. This is how it will happen. I will use this sling and take your head. Afterwards, I will remove your, your head and I will give it to the dead. Are you ready? At least let me, let, let me give you the privilege of knowing how you will die. Who are thou uncircumcised Philistines? The Bible says when you stand, say, who are thou mountain? See, many of you, many of you are, are insulting God. You are always thinking of what Satan can do, what he will do, which spirit is coming now. Can you not think of the majesty of God? Can you not think of, the Bible says he upholds all things by the word of his power. Rise up on your feet. Let's pray for five minutes. Go ahead and pray in tongues. Say, Lord, light has come to me right now. I know certain things about Satan right now. He is not all powerful. Say, Satan, you have been deceiving me, making me esteem you as the Almighty. But tonight, by revelation, I know you are not the Almighty. I have been given authority. Pray. 
Ante kala kate baskobaya. Over snakes. Over scorpions. Over snakes. Scorpions. Over curses. Over activities of witchcraft. Over the manifestations of the devil. Lift your voice and pray. Ambre katabala rabosha. Re katali katai. Even the lawful captives, even the lawful captives, the captives of the mighty shall be delivered. He said, I will contend with them that contend with you. I will contend with them that contend with you. And I will give you peace. I will contend with them that contend with you. Go ahead and pray. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord. Thoughts of good and not of evil. To bring you a future and an expected end. But I know whom I have believed. Satan, get lost. Lift your voice now and pray. Say, Satan, take your hands off my life. Pray it. For it is written. It is written. Even the demons are subject to me. In the name of Jesus. Go ahead and declare. Thou devil of depression. Thou devil of depression. Terminal disease, manifestations of witchcraft in my life and in my family. Your reign is terminated tonight. Come on, pray. You are in the house of God. And upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance. There shall be holiness. Every devil, every demon, every spirit standing in my way in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, give way. Come on, pray. Say, Lord, I'm anointed. I'm powerful. The reign of Satan ends in my life. Hallelujah. 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 What you don't confront, you will never conquer. In the next one minute, we are going to pray. There are some things that have lingered in your life. Some devilish dreams, some demonic oppressions. You've been laughing about it. People come to press you, sleep with you in the night. You are laughing, but you know you are a victim of these things. All kinds of objects, demonic nonsense. People are going to heaven. You are going to hell. Hell in the earth. Because of all kinds of things. You can't sleep in the night. You hear voices. Many of you hallucinate. Many of you do all kinds of devilish things. Right now, with your own mouth and your own authority. I'd like you to lift your voice. Get angry. Come on, get angry and pray. I have been given authority over snakes, scorpions. Please pray. Every devil that harasses you in the night, you are upon Mount Zion. Where there is deliverance. I'm above thrones, dominions, powers. Every name that is named. Every name. Satan, I have no business with you. You have no business in my life. Pray. Pray for your family. 
pray for your father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One scripture, last prayer point. Psalm 66. I love Psalm 66, a rich verse. I want to give you a scripture that you used to pray this week. How many of you are getting angry in your spirit? I hope you are not just getting excited for nothing. You will die. You will die. Every day you keep hearing the voice. You will die. You can't go out. You can't. Some of you have stopped biking. You will die. There are many of you that hear all kinds of suicidal voices. Go and hang yourself. And you are even contemplating. Even if I'm not born again, that spirit will walk in my life. Hang myself. I love myself. I love myself so much. Are you there? Jesus. Verse 3. We are going to read it together. Psalm 66 verse 3. Are you there? One to read. Say unto God. Through the greatness of thy power shall your enemies do what? Shall your enemies do what? He said, Lord, how marvelous are your works. They are all inspired. He didn't say the enemies will subject because your teeth is white and you can shout. He said through the greatness of your power. Through the greatness. And the Bible says now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power. So the power is working in me. Say the power is working in me. Now you are going to pray. He says even the demons were subject. What does it mean subject? They will do whatever you tell them to go. You tell them go. Where the word of a king is, there is power. And Revelations 5 verse 10 says that we have been made unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign on this earth. See, when you do not have knowledge of the word, Satan will make a mess of your life. We are going to pray right now. You are going to say, Lord, the greatness of your power is at work in me. Therefore, Every devil that makes himself an enemy to my destiny, he will submit to me. Go ahead and pray. Please pray. Lift your voice. The way some of you are praying, you really don't want breakthroughs in your life. This is the last prayer point. Say unto God, how all inspiring are thy ways. Through the greatness of thy power, will your enemies submit? Will devils, will situations, it takes a force, an ability, an agency of power, an agency. Make sure you are praying. Now, Lay your hands on your head and prophesy, I'm untouchable. Begin to pray. Say, I anoint my head by myself. By myself. In the name of Jesus. No devil. No man trouble me. I bear upon my body the marks of Christ. No spirit of death. Bratakatabalataya. Mam bras kopo so sote, e kerieketa, rabasi ketelebos, prophesy, I shall not die. No devil born in hell will make me cut short my life. No devil will make me abort my destiny. Pray, no devil in hell. No devil in hell. No devil in hell. No devil in hell. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Look up. 
Look up. Look up. Sorry, we'll pray one more time. I know our time is gone. But listen, you are going to pray and say no man born of a woman can take my life when it's not my time. This is what I believe. I've said this for years. Please, I'd like you to pray. Not arm robbers, not bombs, not the sword. Say it. Don't keep quiet. No man, if that man was created, if that man was created, Kababakata, through the greatness, oh God, of the power that you have given me, through the greatness of the power that you have given me, through the greatness of the power that you have given me, every enemy submits. I live long. I live strong. I live prosperous. Pray for E and I. Pray for Koinonia. No devil in hell. No devil in hell. The Lord is building his church. The gates of hell cannot prevail. For it is written, See, I have made you a God unto Pharaoh. See, I have made you a God unto Pharaoh. See, I have made you a God unto Pharaoh. Through the greatness of thy power, through the greatness of thy power, will your enemies submit themselves. I saw Satan fall. Satan, you are fallen in my life. Satan, you are fallen. Your power is broken. I'm shining. I'm shining. I'm shining in the light of the Lord, in the glory of God. A thousand shall fall by my side. Ten thousand by my right side. None shall harm me. With my eyes shall I watch and behold the reward of the wicked. I am delivered from the scorching tongues of men. It has no effect in my life. No effect. I cannot be caused. No cause. No witchcraft. No divination. No sorcery can prevail. I'm above, I'm above, I'm above, yes, I'm above, yes, I'm above, yes, I'm above. Kaparakata, Maprokoto Prestia. Hallelujah. When you are on fire and you command power, let me tell you the truth. You will subdue principalities and powers. He says, see, behold, conceive in your spirit. I have made you a God unto Pharaoh. Satan was created. He was created. Brothers and sisters, Satan has never had the ability to create anything. He only perverts. But there is the Almighty who shall decree a thing and it will come to pass when the Lord has not. Take away that devilish mindset. Take away that demon conscious mindset. Take it away. You may be criticized for it, but take it away. The things God wants you to know about Satan are the things we have shared with you. Satan is not much for God. He's not a little stronger than God. No, sir. Because when there was war in heaven, it wasn't even God that fought. It was Angel Michael. It would be an insult for God to fight Satan. For the Bible says he rides upon a white horse. When he opens his mouth, a double-edged sword comes. And he slays the whole nation. Come on. 
So if he opens his mouth concerning your situation, and he's the voice, he's the word, but you are that voice. See, stop looking at yourself as one weak and no, 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 no. Approach the territory of the enemy with conviction. I've been saying this thing for years. Satan notwithstanding. Stop thinking about Satan. Think about what God can do. How majestic are your works, O oh God? How majestic are your works? Read the book of Psalms. See how he magnifies God. Be magnified. Let the people praise you. The mountains keep before him like rams. Oh, that thou wouldest rend the heavens. This must be your meditation. Not that spirit you call me now. If someone looks at me and says before evening I will die, let me be honest with you, I will not even pray about it. The Bible says I am the apple of his eyes. I don't know what you understand about being the apple of his eye. He said I have loved you with an everlasting love. Agape, love without conditions. I warned Satan over my family. I gave him a sound warning some years ago. Sound warning. Hallelujah. This thing has not finished. Thank God, Bishop. Bishop has a prayer, a prayer retreat tomorrow. We'll, we'll take the announcement. This is what a, what a, you see how God is, is arranging things. Because tomorrow we are going to be praying from what time to what time, sir? 8.30 to 3 p.m. You enter the same trouser with Satan tomorrow. Somebody will leave that trouser at the end of those hours of prayer. They say when a small boy is trying to fight an elderly man, one day let him fight. Let the elderly man beat him in an irrecoverable way. People keep saying you are too big now. This guy is small. Leave him. Leave him. The boy thinks he can fight. Let the elderly man beat him. I used to have a one of our classmates in secondary school. His name is John. Well-built guy. Had a dream of becoming a soldier. All these junior students that claim they are big and they are rude. Us were preachers were nice. One day the guy got angry and he dragged the big junior student, lifted him and took him to our class. They locked the door and he threw the key to the hostel. After 10 minutes, all we were hearing were lamentations. He beat the living daylight. The junior student had been, he was, he's actually a big guy, very big guy. And he had been harassing people. But John beat him that day. He said, I see you in age in power. We used to sing one song growing up, Devil I Senior You. Devil I Senior You. Now, you see, all those songs that didn't make sense will start making sense now. He lived before you, but the moment you became joined to Christ, you are older than him. The Spirit of God lives in you. Hallelujah. And he beat that guy. The senior students had to search for the key. When they came and opened it, there was blood in his nose, his ears, his mouth. Injuries that took a long time. He said, let this be a signature to all junior students. That when we say someone is in SS3, he didn't just smile to get there. And it was a sound warning that maintained decorum till we finish. Some of you may need to. You say, Satan, don't come to me, I won't come to you. No, you need to step in. Jesus stepped in and said, open up those doors and carry everything he has stolen. Father, we thank you for tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus. That you will bless us by the power of your spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Father. Let us be on fire for you. Teach us to respect your authority and to trivialize Satan in our lives. Hallelujah. I see someone here with um, something like a growth around your neck. You've been trusting God for it. 
I want you to know that the Lord will heal you perfectly. You will not recover. You will be instantly healed tonight. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You are the King. There is no other. Yes, Lord. same song again. And while we sing it, the power of God will come upon 11 people. 11 people. The Spirit of God is in this place and His power is strong. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You are the King. Thank you. 
number of people under strong influences of demons and occultic powers. Hallelujah. At the clash of a cymbal and a shout, especially outside, there will be a lot of deliverance right about now. Satan, I speak to you and every demon presented in this auditorium. At the count of three, let God's people go. One, two, three. She's under a strong influence of demons. Please bring her here. Wake up! She's under a strong influence of demonic powers. Not a guy, a lady. There is a lady. Strong influence of demonic powers. Just lay your hands on him. Lay your hands on him. 
thou devil, I command you right now by the power of the Spirit, let this guy go. Don't manifest, I forbid you. Let him be. Let him be. Leave him alone. Don't hold him. Don't hold him. I speak to this wicked spirit over this lady. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I command that devil, I see you in the spirit, let her go. In the name of the Lord Jesus, let the fire of the Lord burn that demon now, now, now. By the Spirit of God, Sabaka Palito Tema, Rateke de Supatia Namaka, he will be delivered totally, 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 totally by the Spirit. For you will not possess him again by grace. I see the manifestation of a lion. That's what I'm seeing in the spirit. Thou devil, have you not been defeated by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Where were you when inside it is false on the cross? In the name of Jesus. Hold on. You're free. In the name of Jesus. Jesus is in this place. Hallelujah. I see one more lady in this congregation and I see demons around you. There's one more person. Satan, for you shall not prevail. Your time is up in her life. The power of God will come upon you right about now. For you shall not prevail. For you shall not prevail. That's what the Spirit of the Lord says. For you shall not prevail. For you shall not prevail. Is there someone called Susanna? Susanna. A lady with the name Susanna, inside, outside. Hallelujah, help me, ushers. A lady with the name Susanna. In this congregation, hold on. Please, those of you inside, just lift up your hands. You will be totally delivered. You're the lady with the name Susanna. Okay, just hold on. I'll attend to you right now. But there's one person, a lady. I see demons around you singing in the spirit. And they will have to leave because you came for this meeting. And with your hands lifted, I want you to shout Jesus just once. Hallelujah. Are you ready? One, two, three. Jesus! 
This why you locate that lady. Let me, Susanna. Where is the lady with the name Susanna? You're the lady with the name Susanna. Look at me. The Lord is going to ignite a fire in you tonight. I listen to me. And the Lord is restoring supernaturally the finances of your family. Does this make sense to you, what I'm saying? Hallelujah. The Lord is giving a supernatural restoration. Hallelujah. Where is your father? He's in Kaduna. Is he walking? He's not walking. For a long time, he has not been walking. The Lord says, I should tell you, go and tell him that favor comes. Favor comes to him. Favor comes to him. And hear me, look at me. I see a lot of men who have been accusing him and been blackmailing him. Uh, the Lord says, I should tell you that the fight is not his own. It is the Lord's. And he's about to step in. You believe that? Hold my hands and let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus for her family, I end oppression now. Standing in for your family, I command by the power of the Holy Spirit that oppression comes for you. It ends in your family. In the name of Jesus. Look at me. Do you have an elder sister? Do you have any elder person? I see a lady who is associated with you who is not married. I'm seeing a lady. Uh, I don't know if you can remember or not, but I'm seeing a lady associated with you. She has not been married for a while. The Lord shows me March. That's what I'm seeing in the spirit. March 2012. As the Lord reveals to me, take this word and give it to them. Hallelujah. God bless you. Come. I see oppression around you. You have been so oppressed of the devil. So, so oppressed. Hallelujah. You are oppressed in your health. I see something wrong with your body, your blood, several things. Look at me. Just lift up your hands. Spirit of God, I pray that you overhaul this lady. Something is affecting your breath. Something is coming out of you right now. Just look at me. Look at me. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Come out of her now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Just look at me. That's what I'm telling you. Look at me. I see something uh, rising from your That devil for you will not oppress her. Oh, this is the lady that came from Kaduna. You're the lady that the Fulani man. This lady met with a Fulani man who did all kinds of things um, took certain objects in your body is that correct made you to strip up your clothes and did everything you came all the way she's a copper from kaduna state and the man wanting to oppress her took certain things around your organs and all of this look at me right now there's something i see inside of your stomach and it's leaving now she she told they told her to get a one noodle of ayah, share it for women around, and to buy all kinds of things to oppress you. Let me tell you, it comes to an end. You came all the way for this miracle. Now I command that thing. You are, I see fire moving around your stomach. That's what I'm seeing in the spirit. There's fire burning. You must be free. You must be free for I see that he's attempting to tie your destiny. And that's what I'm seeing. It's supposed to be that uh, because you are not complying to him, he's working at killing you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I set you free right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Can I have one lady here, please? Hallelujah. Just lay your hands on her, Tommy. That's what I wanted to do. Anyone? Yes. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Mm. Out of her now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. You're feeling like you want to vomit this. Thou wicked devil. Planting things in your body. The Bible says everything that has not been planted by my father. 
right now. Let her go right now. 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 In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at me. Say after me, I am free. Say it, I am free. I am free. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I am free. I am free. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Where are you from? States. You're from Kaduna State. Do you have a brother? Yes. What's he doing? He's working in Kano. He's an architect. He's working in? He's working in Kano. I'm seeing him crying. Things have not been working for him. That's what I see him with tears. Uh, things have not been working, but the Lord is going to bring a great restoration in his finances. I see that the Lord, there's a contract he has been looking for. He will not get it, but it's for a reason. A bigger one is coming. Tell him, let him not be disappointed. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm seeing an elderly woman outside. There is an elderly woman outside your daughter or any of your family member brought you. Please can you bring her? There's an elderly woman. There may be many, but there's an elderly woman. I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, she's wearing a wrapper. Uh, just, how do I describe this now? An elderly woman. Hold on. Don't take her yet. Bring her. Look at me, my dear. Just look at me. That's exactly what I saw in the spirit. Come, madam. Leave her now. Thou devil, let her go. In the name of Jesus, you have oppressed her. I see oppression around your abdominal region set her free now i see like a snake moving around your body that's what i see like a snake moving around your body i see like a snake moving around her you see that manifestation are you seeing it i see like a snake that's what i'm seeing in the realm of the spirit i see the manifestation of a snake i see the manifestation of a snake look at what she's doing look at this that's the manifestation I command in the name of Jesus, thou demonic spirit, leave her now. Leave her now. God gave man authority to bruise the head of the serpent. Lay your hands on her tummy, her tummy. Or, don't worry, let, let Jampa do that. Take up your hands, my dear. Come out of her now. Come out of her now. Come out of her now. There are anointed hands upon your stomach. And I see a manifestation of something come out of her right now in the name of Jesus for the authority of the king is in this place. You are totally free. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Mommy. experience pain in your back? Yes. Since I come here, it be like something hold me here. They pay me. I pay my chicken. Say, since I Wes, you came here with your son? Who did you come here with, ma? Or with your, your her daughter? Where's your brother? He's not here. 
Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, something to turn my body, my belly. Yeah. Now. When you came in? Yes, since I come outside. I no. tell her, I say something to hold me here. But now they turn all my okay. belly. I saw this woman hanging on a tree. That's what I saw. I saw you hanging on a tree. You were literally being strangled, hanging on a tree. And you were you were hung from your waist. That's what I was seeing. You believe the Lord will set you free? Mommy? Yes. Okay. I want to pray for you right now. Please hold my hands. Right now, in the name of Jesus, let this woman go free. You know, Satan is such a wicked person. How can he oppress an elderly woman like this? Hallelujah. For many of you who like Satan and take it nice and slow and easy, there's no being social with Satan. The Bible has always addressed him as an enemy and you must treat him as one. In the name of the Lord Jesus, please come or, or anyone just lay hands on her. I see something like a growth. In the name of Jesus, you're feeling objects moving around your stomach. In the name of Jesus, let that pain from your back, let it leave you right now. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Amen. I set you free right now. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. I set you free right now. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. in the name of Jesus, Amen. go. I see you being loose, that's what I'm seeing in the spirit. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. please check yourself. Check yourself right now, madam. Check yourself. Tell her to check us. Okay. Check yourself. Where is she experiencing any pain? Yes, that's what I was seeing. I told her, okay, uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus, thou devil, I command the pain. See, I'm seeing fire. There's fire passing through your back. That's what is happening right now. Fire is passing through your back right now. Right now, that's what is happening. In the name of Jesus, you are completely healed. Completely healed. Completely healed. Completely healed. See, that's the power of God in you. Completely healed in the name of Jesus. In the name, do you feel any pain again? Go ahead. It's not pain me when we like it. Hallelujah. Was that English? Okay. God has perfected your body, madam. I'd like you to go and rejoice in the name of Jesus. And come. Come. Look at me. That guy is only going to deceive you and he will ruin your life. Let him go and walk in a new path. God will direct you. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord is healing growth right now. If you came here, hear me, inside and outside, if you came here with any kind of tumor or any cancerous growth, now is the time. I see people with cancers, breast cancer, lungs, and, and all kinds of growth. I see someone with something around your eyes. I don't know if it's a growth or something around your eyes. Hallelujah. I'm about to pray for you right now. And the power of God will set you free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is there any Rachel in this place? Inside and outside. Rachel. 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 No, 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 not you. There's a, I know, I don't think it's, Rachel, come. Your name is Rachel. What's wrong with you? I 
feel body pains. You feel body pains. It looks like people are beating you in the night. When you lie down, you feel pains all around your body. Is that correct? Is that true? God is going to set you free right now. Hallelujah. Um, come. There's one of you with a medical condition. Who is that person? You are the one with the medical condition. You met the doctor. Were you discouraged when you spoke with him? Sir? Were you discouraged when you spoke with the doctor? Not really. You believe God can set you free? Yes, sir. You believe with all of your heart? Yes, sir. Lay your hands on your chest and just lift one hand. Lift one hand. Look at me, look at me. We're not playing games. Be very, very serious about what we're doing here, pray. Do you understand? God wants to set you free. So take it very seriously. If you feel embarrassed about it, go back to your seat. Hallelujah. God is in a serious business and he's setting you free, all right? In the name of the Lord Jesus, I command perfection for you, absolute perfection, for there is more than the doctor has told you, but the Lord sets you free tonight. Do you agree with what I'm saying? There's more, I'm seeing more than the doctor. I will not say it now because we're talking to a congregation, but there is more than the doctor has diagnosed. I want you to know that the Lord sets you free right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, God bless you. I'm not the one who will minister to you. When one of the ministers come, they will minister to you. Just hold on. Don't go back to your seat. Just find somewhere. Please come, my dear. First instruction is a call to get very serious with God. We're in a season where we need to draw to Him with all of our hearts. I saw you holding a basket and the basket was bigger than you. That tells me there are so many cares that you're loading upon yourself. But Jesus said, cast all your cares because He cares for you. Do you understand? Are you sick in your body? You're not sick in your body. You think so? I was feeling a pain. Okay, you don't know you are sick, but there's something wrong with you. And the Lord is going to set you free. Where did you feel the pain? You believe God will set you free? Just lay your hand there. And then, look at me. You will lose weight. You're going to lose your weight because it's granting you your heart's desire. Just, just look at me. Hold your hands. God is doing something dramatic in this place. Just look at me. You're going to lose your weight. You're going to reduce your weight. Not when you go back to your home. I mean, right here. Hold my hands. Hold my hands. Let it be. Even according to your word. Now. Be healed. And I command supernatural weight loss. Now. Supernatural weakness. So those with both, please. Let's. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, inside and outside, you came here with all kinds of growths, tumors. 
right now in the name of Jesus, I command, be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Cancers die now in the name of Jesus. Every throat and every tumor be gone now in the name of Jesus. Fibroids disappear now in the name of Jesus. I want you to begin to check yourself inside and outside. If you came here with any growth, check yourself inside and outside. God is doing a miracle right now. Growth, check yourself inside and outside. And then locate the ushers or the members of the media department. God is healing growth supernaturally. I see a lady with a lump in the left side of your breast. It's gone right now. Check yourself. It's gone right now. Check yourself. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Stephen. 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 Why did you think God will not meet your need? He is more than able. Are you listening to me? Look at me. He is more than able. You believe that? You believe he's able? I like it after me. He is able. He is able. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray that you set this guy on fire. God is releasing an anointing upon you and is causing you to walk in his ways even by the power of his spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. That's what the Lord says for me to tell you. I listen that God opposes the proud, but he gives grace unto the humble. Lord, grant him great grace. I see a great call of God upon your life. Look at me. I see a great call of God upon your life. But when God calls men, he doesn't send them yet. He makes them and then he sends them. Lord, release grace upon him to stay. In the name of the Lord Jesus, the staying grace of the Holy Spirit. Please come. Did you come here alone? You came here alone? I'm seeing someone related to you with mark on the face. Do you have someone like that? My dad. Your father has a mark on the face. That's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing someone with a mark on the face. The Lord says, for I will promote him and I will exalt him. Take that message to your father. Your father has been struggling over a promotion issue. Is that correct? He has been oppressed. He's supposed to be promoted, but for some reasons he has been kept. I see he has a mark on his face. The Lord says, For I will exalt him, I'll promote him, and I will exalt him. Hallelujah. God bless you. Um, I don't know. I don't see anything for you, but then we'll pray for you anyway. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The reproach is taken away from you. Does this make sense to you, what I've said? What is the reproach? Uh, the reproach is taken away from you. It has affected your, your, comp your, your self worth. You have a lot of complex. You just smile like things are working, but things are not working. I see a whirlwind around your family and all of that. God is telling me the reproach is taken off from you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the reproach is taken off from you. Um, I want those with heart conditions. Hear me, inside and outside. If you came here with a heart condition, either a hole in your heart or a cardiovascular problem, please come out very quickly. Very quickly, inside and outside, ushers direct them. If you came here with a heart condition, please come out quickly. Either a hole in your heart or you've been diagnosed to have something that has to do with your heart. I don't mean asthma. I don't mean asthma, please. The 
there's one of you, you, you faint a lot, you can fall down. Uh, it looks like you are epileptic, but who is that person? You can slum down every now and often. Who is that person? There's someone um, you, can, you experience, will I call it seizures, as a result of your heart challenge, either inside or outside. Is there anyone like that? Don't sit back. God is bringing you salvation. Come. The Lord is setting you free. Are you listening to me? The Lord is setting you free. Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus, that epileptic condition leaves you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, seizures around your heart. Uh, I don't know. I'm seeing like a machine that reads the frequency of people's heartbeats. In the name of Jesus, I declare that you are free from it. Totally free from every challenge around your heart. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Heart conditions. Heart conditions. Look at me. Yes, ma'am. For your son, no problem, mommy. We'll pray for you. Come, my dear. You have seizures too now. You fall down and slump. Why did you remain? I'm seeing in the spirit. Come. You believe God is going to set you free right now? You believe that? Hold my hands. Do you know anybody called Hawa? a lady called Hawa and God is going to use that lady to bless your life greatly. That's what God is saying I should tell you. Anyway, hold my hands. Hold my hands with both of your hands. I want to pray for you now. Look at me. Look at me. Don't doubt. Don't doubt. You're saying will it happen? Will it not happen? It will happen. Don't doubt. Are you listening to me? Believe God. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I receive perfection. Lord, release it unto her right now. <laughs> no, 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 not you. It's me praying for you now. In the name of Jesus, I command by the power of the Holy Spirit that these seizures end in your life forever. In Jesus' name. Those of you standing for heart conditions, just hold your, hold your hands together. You have a heart condition? What, what, why are you here? Yes. is epileptic yes. so you're standing well we're not are we exactly is epilepsy related to the heart medical people we need to start getting some doctors on the healing line oh there's a medical doctor here. okay it's not related oh, okay anyway you can't go back you came out for something so let's stand in for him will you agree for your uncle look at me in the name of jesus i command perfection 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 now in the name of Jesus absolute perfection for your uncle in Jesus name please hold your hands together I want to speak over your life believe it the greatest surgeon is in this place you have cried how many of you have holes in your heart have you does any of you have that diagnosis a hole in the heart and then anything that has to do with your heart right now in the name of Jesus I command perfection 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 in the name of jesus perfection i decree and declare by the power of the holy spirit that you are healed for yourself and those who are standing for in the name of the lord jesus christ absolute perfection receive it by the power of the holy spirit in the name of the lord jesus christ i'd like you to go back and check yourself you are perfectly healed by the power of the holy spirit hallelujah there's someone here, um, you hear voices and they talk to you, especially at evenings. And when that happens, when you recover, it looks like you were mad temporarily for a while. There's someone with that situation in here. Please, who is that person? Very quickly, please, let's save time. There's someone inside and outside. 
with that situation, you hear voices. Hallelujah. You hear voices. Come. God is faithful and you will be delivered right now. You believe that? You believe that? Yes. Well, let me ask you a question. Can fresh water and salt water mix? Does it make sense to you what I'm saying? Does it make sense to you what I'm saying? Can fresh water and salt water mix together? For it's only he who breaks the hedge that the serpent will strike. Don't you think it's time for you to be born again and to mean it very seriously with the Lord? Is it not time enough for you to love him? You've been running away from him. And right now standing, I'm seeing you. You're not born again. You came here. Are you ready to give your heart to Jesus right now? Say after me, dear Lord Jesus. I believe. I believe that you died for me. That you died for me. I confess. I confess my inability to help myself. My inability to help myself. Right now. Right now. I declare. I declare that you are Lord of my life. That you are Lord of my life. I receive salvation. I receive salvation. And eternal life into my spirit. And eternal life into my spirit. I am immune. I am, I am immune. And immune to I sickness. Am immune to sickness. Satan. Satan and death. And death. I disconnect myself. I disconnect myself from anything that is not of God. From anything that is not of God. From today. From today. I embrace the things of the kingdom. I embrace the things of the kingdom. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And Lord, by this confession of His salvation, I set you free. In the name that is above all other names. No more voices. You are totally separated from them. In the name of Jesus. Please hold my hands. Hold me other hands. For you will prosper in that which you are doing, said the Lord. I will cause you to prosper. And I will exalt you. I will exalt you. I will exalt you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. My leg. And at times I feel something hitting me like arrow here. Something hits you like arrow? Yeah. From it where? Rips. Just like that. I just You will be set free right now. Right now. Right now because of your faith, mommy. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Jesus is truly the answer in this wicked world. Hallelujah. Please just lay your hands as a point of contact to your leg. Mommy, can you do that? Just touch anywhere. The power of God will flow just like fire. Right now. In the name of Jesus. Sense fire. Fire. Please check yourself. You're healed right now. Go ahead. Check yourself. Let's work, mommy. Check yourself. Do you feel any pain? Any pain? Thank you. Any pain? Do you feel any pain? I don't feel any pain. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please go back to your seat. Hallelujah. Ejimi. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, when you were praying for the mommy that wore Ashoke, I saw her son. It's like someone is building in Lagos environment. They're at the outskirts of Lagos. Someone in her family is building building property and I saw the person double into some things like some things diabolic I want her to come let's pray for her she doesn't know anything about it it's a loved one a son elderly okay Elder quickly, please can, can we have uh, Rachel the, the woman who come. Rachel immediately he called you out I was praying there and God just showed me you. I, my head was down, but he showed me you. 
He said something, are you Yoruba? Does your surname start with B? What's your surname? Ishako. Are you from a Muslim background? Were you ever from a Muslim background? Since the beginning of the week, I was seeing a Rachel or a Rahila. Rachel or Rahila. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. That's Rachel Rahila, dear. That's her. Okay. Rachel Rahila. Okay, you are Rachel Rahila. Oh, okay. Okay. Are you from a Muslim background? You are from a Muslim ba background. Okay. All right. Sorry. I sit down. <laughs> Rachel Rahila. Okay. Father, I thank you. Sorry, what's your son name? Eh? Oh, Justin, did you have an elder brother? Where is he? Where is he right now? Do you have an elder brother that is walking? Do you have anybody elderly that is walking? Do you have any, any elderly person, person that is walking? No. Okay, I'm seeing it. I, immediately she came out, I saw Moe. Moe or father. That's what I saw. Seeking for job. They are home. Yes. Thank you, Father. I'll just pray for you. Okay? I'll just pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray you perfect this family. I pray you perfect this family. Where is your father? Is also at home. Where you live, what's your accommodation status like? You can't explain. Are you owing rent? Do you have accommodation issues? No. Okay. Father, I pray for their family. I pray for advancement. 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 In the name of Jesus. I see your mom crying. I see your mom crying over her sons. But God says she should wipe her tears. She should dry her tears. God says he will move them forward. In the name of Jesus. Let your brothers get serious with God. God will bless them. Amen. I see God saying to you, Rachel Rahila. That's what I saw from the beginning of the week. And I see God say to you, she can go. I see God say to you that you should remember not the former things, that he will do a new thing in the name of Jesus. I see God say to you, she is to tell your mom that it's well with her. It's well with her. It's well with her. I'm saying blood poisoning is well with her in the name of Jesus. Blood poisoning. I'm seeing blood poisoning. Look at me. Is your mom all right? What's wrong? She was diagnosed for hiatus hernia. She was diagnosed for what? Hiatus hernia. It was like a growth in her stomach and she, she, does, she can't eat well. Anytime she eats, she sort of throws up sometimes. I'm seeing, I'm seeing. Lord, I pray you heal her mom in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, your mother is healed. We bring her healing from the throne. Enjoy healing in the name of Jesus. I saw a Dorcas blood poisoning. Dorcas blood poisoning. You can go. Dorcas blood poisoning. And I saw God say, pray for people who have both blood poisonings or any kind of poisoning of any sort. If you know anybody that had a poisoning, poisoning of any sort, snake bites, any complication due to poisoning, I saw God healing that person. Anybody like that, please come out. Blood poisoning, a dark ass blood poisoning. God is going to use her to heal several other people. Thank you, Father. What's your name? Dark ass. I, what's wrong with you? Snake bite. That's what God told me. Dark ass, snake bite, blood poisoning. As we were worshiping, I saw, I saw, I was ascending a staircase and I entered a white room. I'm there right now and I'm seeing a bed and I saw Dorcas and God told me snake bite, blood poisoning. That's what God told me. You are the one. You, you are in secondary school. 
you are in what class? SS2, SS, what class? Okay, God showed me a lady, you had this prim- uh, secondary school with it. <laughs> in the name of Jesus, you are healed. From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, you are healed. You are healed. You are healed in the name of Jesus. Now look at me, look at me. Where did it bite you? When did it happen? I'm seeing like three months ago. When did it happen? It was snake bite. God said, Docker's blood poisoning, snake bite. You are healed in Jesus' name. Amen. And I see it. Uh, please, you just let me minister to you, Steve. Amen. I saw God say, not just to Steve, God said to Steve and to Reuben. Steve and to Reuben. Reuben, God says, He's going to change your finances. He's going to change your finances. Something happened this week. It's like it was Wednesday, you were disappointed financially, significant financial disappointment. What I'm saying, is it true? Is it true? I saw you standing in front of an ATM, and the ATM said, um, insufficient funds. God just used it as a typography. God said, ATM will bring out money, you will be tired. I saw it. God said, tell Ruben. Tell Ruben. And Steve. I've been seeing something for close to one month. It's actually for all the music ministers, but God is pointing out you and you. And I saw, I've been seeing a harp for a long time, a big harp. And I saw someone playing, and every time that person plays, God rises, and when God rises, things happen. And then God showed me a confirmation from the book of Revelation, and he spoke about the harpers who played their harp before the throne. And God said, I should tell you that in an unusual grace, God says he's unlocking a prophetic realm, dimension to you, that as you play, as you were playing, in fact, I saw, as you were playing, I saw, as you played, the name Tulu Lope just came out from your strings. And God said, as you play, you will literally be setting people free setting people free. And God said that there is a Tulu Lope here. You have been under the influence of demonic spirits as a result of secular music. Secular music. Secular music. That person should come out now. Come out now. Whoever you are, come out now. Come out now. Whoever that person is, please come out. Please come out. Okay, if she's not here, no problem. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, sweetheart. Sir, the Lord is asking me to speak to you. I think God says He's addressing an issue in your life that has to do with housing. Am I talking to you? God says he's addressing an issue in your house, in your life that has to do with housing. And God says the days of trouble concerning house is over. God says he's giving you a house. Amen. Do you receive a word from the Lord? Is that what is happening to you right now? Okay. Praise God. Of a reality, I... I've been humiliated about house. And I've been telling God about that. Uh, my profession. I do building, construction, a civil engineer. I designed for my younger ones and built for them. But I've not got one. And I've been telling him that. And it has cost me concern. Uh, but I believe God. I know why uh, I took up to come by his grace. I believe that God has picked God is giving you a house, a house that you built by yourself. And God says, as you leave this place, this is the beginning of a new financial open door in your life that you will never be able to recover from. I see that by this time next year, you'll be counting millions, says the Spirit of God. Father, we thank you. Mommy, I see that you came with a design in your heart. I see a daughter, someone you've been talking to the Lord and crying to about marriage. A daughter about marriage. Yes. 
God says he's telling you to rest. God says rest. God says rest. I see a man coming. And I see you rejoicing. In the name of Jesus Christ. Mommy, God says relax. He said the days of tears and sorrow are over. I hear God says promotion to you. Promotion to you. Promotion to you. I see someone related to your husband, like a relative who has humiliated you through the years. Yes. Am I speaking? Yes. Someone related to your husband, like a brother who has humiliated you through the years. Yes. God says he's going to step into the situation. God says the days of the warfare is going to be over. Amen. God says the days of the warfare is over. I see God bring to you a lot of open doors. Amen. God is going to wipe your tears away financially. Amen. And God says, your husband, people who have been far away from you, who have spoken evil about you, God says they will run back Amen. to you, they will apologize to you, and they will ask for your forgiveness. In the name of Jesus Christ. I don't know what exactly you do, but I see a profession, and I hear God talk about a new certification that is open door for you about I see like a qualification. I see that you've been pursuing a particular qualification. You've been pursuing a certain certification. And God says that door is going to open to you. What do you do? Uh, yes, qualification. Um, presently, I've just finished my exam. Yes. Yeah, you just finished your exam. Yeah. You just finished your exam. So you know now that God is speaking to you. That certification, I see the hand of the Lord resting Amen. upon it. Amen. God is qualifying you. Amen. And God is setting you at the top. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The lady, um, Rahila, that was prayed for. I see an issue that your mom has been crying to God about. Something related to your father. Something that has brought pain and sorrow over the years. And your mom has not recovered from it. Where is your father? He traveled. What does he do? He walks in Abuja. I see a pain that she has carried in her heart about him. Something evil that has happened. Something that has brought her sorrow over the years. God says he's healing her. Healing her from that. And God says he's bringing joy to her. In the name of Jesus. Among the Stevens that are supposed to call, there was one that was not ministered to here. I know he was feeling... As if God left him. Where is he? Please come. God wants to minister to you now. And God wants to minister to Gideon. Where is Gideon? Gideon, come. Come, God wants to minister to you and to Gideon. I don't know where you grew up, but I see like at a certain time, someone was brought into your family and he stood in front of your house and did certain incantation. He was actually invited by a family member. Yes. He came into your house, he did certain incantation, and he was meant to help your family come out of certain challenges that your family was going through. Am I right? Yes. I'm right. God says that's the reason why there have been so many setbacks in your family. God says the enemy came and built an altar in your family, and your father invited him. And God says right now, he's destroying that altar and liberty is coming to your family. In the name of Jesus, I command deliverance to your family. The setbacks that your siblings have experienced, I declare that there's an open door for them right now. Go, the yoke is broken in the name of Jesus Christ. Are you Gideon? Okay, you are the Gideon the Lord gives me a word for. I see a situation that has to do with your father, like a head condition that has been experienced for a while. Yeah, your father is late because I saw him lying on the belt and with his hand on his chest. And what God is telling me is that that particular condition is threatening someone in your family at the moment. Is anybody in your family experiencing the same health challenge that your father encountered? Okay, I pray for your family because the Lord speaks to me about Gideon. Lord, I pray for his family, that that which took his father away, that health condition, 
no one in his family will be cut off by the enemy in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Brother Ruben, I see like a contest, something related to music that is coming your way very shortly. And I see the Lord giving you honor from that. I see like a musical, like a context, something you've been seeking to be part of. Am I speaking? Like a musical context, sort of, that you've been pursuing all the way. God says it's going to come shortly. And I see the Lord giving you victory in it. God says he's going to honor you through it. In the name of Jesus. Okay, see the Lord speaks to you. I see a situation in the family that has involved like a lawsuit, court case. A situation in the family that's involved like a court case that has been for a while. God says this is a time that he's going to cause permanent victory to come to your family from it. God says the people that have fought your family, God says this is a time that he will step in for your family and the victory will be permanent. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I see that there have been certain spiritual battle even over your mom's life. And according to the plans of the enemy, the enemy intend to shoot a spiritual arrow that will ruin your mom's health even in this December. But God says, deliverance come to your mom right now. Deliverance come to your mom right now. God says it brings permanent touch to her body. Casey, what's wrong with mama? There has been a lot of spiritual battle around her life. Actually, she, she thinks a lot. Actually, she's been thinking a lot since dad died. She's been, most times I watch her, she's just very absent-minded. God says he will fight her battle. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Tosin, while I was speaking, I just looked at you and the Lord is giving me a word. God says he wants you to rest. That he wants to tell your mom to rest. God said he's stepping into your family and he's worrying the war of your family. God says he forbids operation for your mom. God says he forbids operation to come to her. God says she shall not be operated. And God says today begin a new season of restoration financially that he brings to your family. In the name of Jesus Christ. Sorry, one minute. And the financial restoration will come. Your father is going to get a contract. He's been in Lagos. Uh, I see that there's been a lot of troubles and without anything substantial, at least I know a bit about it. But then the Lord speaks to me to prophesy Revelations 3 verse 8 that he will set before him an open door that no man can shut. Hallelujah. I, I see someone like the doctor told you You've been afraid, based on the report the doctor gave you, that you're going to be operated. I see something connected to your kidney. And you've been afraid, because of what the doctor told you, that you're going to be operated. Where is that person? Just lift up your hands. I want to pray for you. Okay, right at the back. Please, just come quickly. Quickly, just rush. Come quickly. God is bringing deliverance to you right now. God is healing that kidney condition right now. And you will not be operated. You will not be operated. You will not be operated. In the name of Jesus, we put the seal over you right now. We declare healing to you in the name of Jesus. I cause that kidney condition to be over right now. And I declare you healed. Declare you healed. In the name of Jesus Christ. You came. Okay, your younger sister, in the name of Jesus, we declare healing for her. We declare that concerning that kidney, there shall be no operation. In the name of Jesus Christ, it is done. That's why you came with like a pain, a sharp pain, like a crack around your arm, this hand. Why? You just lift up your hands. Let me pray for you right now. Mom, is you again? <laughs> in the name of Jesus Christ, I release total healing to your hands. Total healing is come to you right now. And I declare you whole. In Jesus' name. I'm saying in my vision, I see man man. And man man, the Lord, I see like some of your family members stands before you. And like your father is speaking and saying, you are taking his children away from him into Christianity. God says, watch with your eyes, you will see supernatural conversion that will begin to happen to your family. 
supernatural conversion. I see that it will start with your sister. It will start with your sister, supernatural conversion. And as it starts, the persecution in your fa family against you will intensify. But God says he will stand by you in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. So when you are talking constantly, Ruben, the, the musical thing was uh, has to do with West Africa. West Africa. God is going to give you West Africa. The music thing is saying, God is going to honor you. Then, uh, mommy, I see the Lord delivering your family from the hand of 419. 419. I see the Lord. I see. When I was sitting there, I saw a flash of a vision. Amen. I saw a flash of a vision. The Lord is delivering your family. I see a conspiracy over to take a, a large sum of money from your family. I don't know whether you, your husband, but God says going to deliver you. I heard a name, uh, a manga. Is there anyone a manga here? A manga, Amanda, manga, Amanda. Amen. She was. I, she, a man, a manga. Mm -hmm. When I was sitting there, I heard the voice. The Lord said, He's going to do a deliverance in her. And also concerning her mother, I see the Lord doing healing. The life of your mother. I see the Lord doing a healing. In the life and heart of your mother. Then also, also there is uh, somebody that came in here with a migraine. A very sh sharp migraine. Do you have anybody like this here? Migraine, a headache. Come on. So the Lord doing him and you. Amanda, Amanda. All right, Amanda. please, very quickly, when your case is mentioned, you can um, come out very quickly. Amanda, Amanda. Is she only Amanga, Amanda, Amanda? I'm still hearing that name clearly in my spirit. Amanda, Amanda, Amanda. The Lord. I'm hearing, are you a manga? a manga? Please don't mind me, guys. I'm hearing the name echoing in my spirit. The Father, I thank you for a manga, Mara, Amanda. I thank you, Lord, because I know you're going to bring peace to their family. I thank you even concerning the confusion. I thank you concerning the confusion. Thank you for direction in Jesus' name. Amen. You can go Amanda, Amanda. Just go. Amen. Father, Lord, I come against every migraine. In the name of Jesus, I come against. Father, I come against every migraine. In the name of Jesus, from the crown of her head to the sole of your feet. You are free in Jesus' name. There was a lady that came in from Kaduna that Apostle was praying for. Kaduna. A lady from Kaduna. Come. I the Lord asked me to tell you when you were praying, I saw something like 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 a smoke came out of you. Overhearing me. Then the Lord told me that there was there is a man that you've been really praying and trusting the Lord that he's going to be the one to ask you out, ask you out the The Lord said he's not the one. The Lord said, when I was, when, when you were in the paper, I saw 15th written in the heaven is 15. And God is going to bring a man into your life February 15. Let's see. He's going to bring the man February, February 15. He says he's going to bring a man into your life. Just go there and pray the Then uh, there's another person I saw, yeah, an artist. I saw somebody drawing, sketching the design sketching and doing if you know you're into art artistry you know, I saw somebody sketching sketching I saw make sure you are actively into artistry actively actively okay uh, we will separate I will pick we will pick the person the right person that was somebody someone I'm talking about the person that did a design last week as a designer that just came here walking and you saw an inspiration came upon you, you did some sketching last week. 
Who is the person among you? It's catchy. How long have you been an artist? How much? How long? Out of me. Okay. Yes, I've been a pastor nine years. Father, I thank you, Lord, for this. I thank you for each and every one of these. And I ask, Lord, the Lord God, I see a contract, a work, a contract to be given to an artist. Father, we thank you because it's certain in Jesus' name. Then Emmanuel, I come. When I was sitting there, I saw a vision and I saw you standing, floating on air. Just come. No way. Though. I was sitting there, I saw you floating on the air. And the Lord said that it's going to release uh, grace. Can somebody hold the mic for me? The Lord asked me to lay my hands on you at the glow of the wind. Father, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Jacob. Hallelujah. Now after this, I'm going to just begin to speak and release blessings and miracles. Please let your heart be set. I will share with you a few things that the Lord told me will be happening in mass to all of us. We're giving opportunities so that we can allow the Holy Spirit minister to individuals. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We began having some cases for people with, um, I think, asthma. There's a small constriction you have just in your chest here. Quickly come out, um, get to pray for you. Then there, there's somebody here with a serious pain on your neck, just behind your shoulder, just round your neck like this. Hallelujah. Then I see a lady eye. I actually had a flash of a vision of you. I saw your mom frowning and I saw you crying. I don't know what happened between you and your mom. Is any lady like that? I saw a woman, quite dark, and I saw her crying. I saw the young lady crying and the woman frowning. Who is that? Hallelujah. And God is healing my grain. God has healed my grain. Manasseh mentioned it too. God is healing my grain. Those with my grains just at the temple here. Left side, very sharp in and at the right. God is healing it. Then I think there's somebody here God is healing. Just your left thigh. Just your left thigh. Just slightly below here. Your left thigh. Hallelujah. All right, please. Um, those of you with chest pain, just get to put your hand there. There's a constriction on your chest. Where's the lady that had a little fracas with her mom? Okay, you. All right, you tell me what it is. I'll pray with you. Hallelujah. Say, listen to me. Please look at me. God is going to reach out to you, okay? Do you understand? Just believe and receive. Hallelujah. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. I ask that, Lord, you stretch forth your hand towards them right now and cause a healing to come upon them. I ask that fresh breath comes into you in the name of Jesus. I speak healing into you. I rebuke every form of pain and every form of constriction right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I pray. pray for you. I'd like you to receive by faith. Check yourself. Even as you go back to your seat, check yourself. Make sure you check yourself. Take it seriously. You act out your faith. Check yourself. Do what you couldn't do before. Hallelujah. Let's rise up on our feet, everybody. You came here tonight because... God wants to bless and lift you. God gave me a specific word for this miracle service. One of the things God said he was doing, I don't know why God has been emphasizing the issue of finances. The issue of finances. Let me tell you something. 
I saw this in a vision that God showed me. Um, the dollar that many of you respect is soon going to become a great disappointment. Are you listening to me? And even for China, a great disappointment is also coming. Let me tell you, the only security in the times to come. Many of you, you see, many of you who have been putting your strength in other things outside God, including finances or that of your parents, you are going to be very, very disappointed. The Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. Hallelujah. I want to release prophetic blessings. Listen, this is very important. For me, this is the height of the miracle service. The Bible says that he said unto the prophet, he said, Son of man, can these bones live? And he said, only thou knowest. And he said, prophesy. He said, as I prophesied, there was a sound in the spirit. Every time prophetic words are released, that's the time God begins to step into the lives of people and alter things. Many of you have come here right now, whether or not your case has been mentioned, now is the time for your faith to come alive. Hear me, inside, outside. Now is the time for God to radically transform your life, your academics, your finances, your spiritual life, every oppression. In one minute before I speak, I like to say, Lord, the time for my change has come. The time for my change inside and outside. I like you to connect. Say, Lord, as this word comes in the name of Jesus, I refuse to doubt. The word of God is lifting me. Shaka ba 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 ba. Randa kapo sekete ba 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 The time has come for me to be lifted in the name of the Lord Jesus. This is what the miracle service is about. Altering your destiny with the prophetic word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everything that represents barrenness, hear me, kaposo tabaratika. Everything that represents barrenness in this place, in the name of the Lord Jesus, is lifted from your life. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Every form of delay over your life, we put an end to it right now, in the name of Jesus. Delay in marriage, delay in admission, delay in whatever kind or whatever form, I command that you are free now, in the name of Jesus. Right now, I command supernatural favor. The Bible says, and Jesus in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and with men. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I release favor, favor, favor. Receive it in Jesus' name. Favor. You are stepping into unlimited favor. In the name of Jesus. For many of you who have experienced any kind of oppression for yourself or for your family, any kind of demonic oppression, because you came here tonight in the name that is above every other name, I command over your life that the reign of oppression comes to an end in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I command liberty for you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible says, because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness. It says, God, even thy God has anointed you with something he calls the oil of gladness. And that oil brings you above your fellows. If you believe what I'm about to speak to your life, let me tell you something. You see, all this, all this nonsense of survival for the fittest, you must know this person connected. 
there's something the Bible calls the oil of gladness that has the ability to bring a man above his equals. He said, because thou lovest righteousness and hated wickedness, he said, God, even thy God has anointed you with an oil of gladness above your feet. In the name of Jesus, that distinguishing anointing that separates a man from his equal right now, receive it inside and outside. In the name of Jesus, that distinguishing anointing, receive it in the name of Jesus. I command that you are distinguished in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, according to Isaiah 11, that after the manifestation of seven spirits, it said, and you will make you of quick understanding. I want to pray over your academics. Quick. And then comes to your reading like a slave in the name of Jesus. For it is not by power, it is not by might, but it is by my spirit. I command right now, receive quick understanding. Receive quick understanding. Receive quick understanding. Receive quick understanding. Let me born be gone in the name of Jesus. Quick understanding. Quick understanding. Understanding. Keep understanding. I want to speak over your family. I don't know how many of you love your family and are serious and tired about what Satan is doing in our families. I want to release a word and say, let there be light. I don't care what challenge it is in your family. Hear me. I speak under the unction of the spirit. Miracles in your family. Receive it now. Miracles in your family. Receive it, 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 receive it. in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. For as many of you who are in any kind of financial debt, I don't care what it is. Whether in business, in ministry, in life, every kind of financial debt represented here, right now, I set you free from it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. One of our goals is that everyone becomes financially blessed and independent. Hallelujah. And I want to speak over your life. Deuteronomy 8 verse 18 says, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. He said, For it is he that giveth thee the power, the anointing, the ability, the capacity to produce wealth. I want to speak over your finances. See, let me tell you something. Whether or not you are in business, whether or not you feel you are old or young, that's not the issue. I'd like you to open up your spirit and connect with what I'm about to release. For you and for your family, many of you are to suffer to pay your school fees. Many of you have not even paid your school fees. Right now, in the name that is above every other name, I command the power to prosper. Let it mantle you now. In the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Ideas, concepts, insights. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to pray and release upon everyone a supernatural anointing to work miracles 
a miracle working and waiting. Listen, I like you to believe there is need for the demonstration of the spirit in healings, in the manifestation of signs and wonders. And I like you to be get ready. We're out of time, we have to hurry up and round up. But I need to release this inside and outside. Many of you have come, especially for those of you in ministry. That a fire and a grace will engulf you. Right now, we see this all over, inside and outside. The miracle working power of the Spirit. We see this. 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 Shaka para baba kabo sepoya. We see this. Go and work wonders. Go and heal the sick. Go and cast out devils. Go and raise the dead. Go and raise the dead. Set the captives free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to pray a prayer. And this is what is going to happen to you. When I pray that prayer, for as many, you will literally sense a call of fire upon your lips. I want to pray that from today, that when you speak over your situation or over the life of others, the creative power of the Spirit will be released right now. In the name of Jesus, receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Inside and outside. Receive it. You will change situations with the creative power of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Creative power of the Spirit. Creative power of the Spirit of God. You will speak and alter the destinies of men. That men will know that your God reigns. Hallelujah. Now I want to specially pray for what I love releasing this anointing. It's called the Esther anointing. I want to pray for you. Let me tell you something. What the favor of God will do for you in one day, you will not do it by labor in a lifetime. Inside and outside, especially for those of you outside, I'd like you to prepare your spirit as you receive uncommon, unusual, undeniable favor. You cannot explain it. You cannot explain it. Favor beyond your age, beyond your level of exposure. Right now, in the name of Jesus, receive it. Yes, the anointing. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. By the faith of the Son of God. Receive it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Favor. Favor. Favor your business. Favor your finance. Favor your academics. Favor your relationship. Favor. 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 Go with it. It's an anointing. Go with it. It will set you apart. Go with it. It will distinguish you. Go with it. Inside and outside. Undeniable favor. It will set you apart. Hallelujah. 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 I feel that in my spirit to pray for all the ladies here concerning your relationship and your marriage. If you know me, I don't do this. But now that's what the Lord is putting in my spirit. Parents, you can stand in for your children. Some of you can stand in for your loved ones that are supposed to get married. I don't care if they are 90 years old. Just stand in faith. I want to speak. The Bible says, Blessed is she that believes, for unto her there shall be a performance. 
Jabez said is she that believes. Isaac blessed Jacob and he said the smell of my son is like the field that the Lord has blessed. For all our sisters inside and outside, as many as can hear me and have the faith to believe, hear me and prophesy to you in the name of the Lord Jesus. No more delay your marriage in the name of Jesus. No more delay your marriage in the name of Jesus. No enchantment, no divination, no satanic manipulation will gain control of your life. I set you free. I blot out every handwriting and every ordinance that speaks against you. I release supernatural relationships in the name of Jesus. I release supernatural marriages in the name of Jesus. 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 Receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Finally, before we end for now, I want to pray a sevenfold restoration. Hear me? A sevenfold restoration. Many of you have lost a lot of things for yourself and for your family members, inside and outside. Many of you have lost a lot of things according to God's word. The Bible says, I will restore unto you the years that the canker worm has eaten the palmer worm and the caterpillar. We want to end this meeting tonight by releasing that restoration. Many of you, as you go back, you will get phone calls, text messages, emails informing you about things that God is doing. I'd like you to believe it. It may be a course in your department. I want to command a reversal and a restoration of impossible situations for as many who are faith to believe. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I release supernatural restoration. Receive it. Receive it. Everything you have lost, receive it a sevenfold restoration. A sevenfold restoration. A sevenfold restoration. Hallelujah. And the angel appeared to Paul and told him, In this ship there shall be no loss. That was the word of the angel. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. Mark my word. Many of you will leave this place and will record fearful testimonies. Hallelujah. The prophet Samuel spoke unto Saul. He said, go back because the ass that your father is looking for, that has been missing, that got you crying and going down, he said it has been found. I command again that whatever you have lost, hear me, I don't care what it is. As individuals, as a family, it may be jobs, it may be relationships, opportunities, spiritual levels, whatever it is, right now, we see the restoration in the name of Jesus. In this meeting tonight, the Lord will mark you for favor, for greatness, for honor, for increase, for influence in the name of Jesus. I repeat, the Lord will mark you for honor, for increase, for favor, for greatness. I pray that the Lord will glorify you in the name of Jesus. The Lord adorns you with honor and beauty and glory in the name of Jesus. That men will see you after tonight and truly know that the Lord touched you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your spirit and for your grace. Now listen to me. 
I want you to know that the greatest gift and the greatest miracle that we can get in this place is the restoration of our relationship with the Lord. There are many of you inside and especially outside who were invited by friends. You have come, you have seen the power of God, you have seen the grace of God. For some of you, God ministered to you directly. Hallelujah. I want you to know that Jesus is calling you. All of these miracles are a proof that Jesus loves you and that if you give him a chance, this will be the beginning of a great time walking and living for him. The Bible says that the thief cometh not but to steal John 10, 10, to kill and to destroy. He said, I am come that ye may have life and have it more abundantly. Right now, I'm inviting all of you inside and outside. Please, everybody keep standing. Let's honor this very miracle inside and outside. The Lord is calling you to be born again and to give your hearts to the Lord. Quit struggling with God. Hallelujah. And this is our week of evangelism. So inside and outside, as many of you who are ready to make a decision for Jesus, I'd like you to leave your seat and come out right now. Inside and outside, appreciate them as they come. Leave your seat. For many of you who have gone far from the Lord, and God is calling you to come. You have been born again at a point, but now you've left the ways of God. God is calling you right now. Leave your seat inside and outside. Appreciate them as they come inside and outside. It's a brand new day. It's a brand new day. It's a brand new day. Appreciate them. The Bible says in the day that you hear his voice, have a not your heart. In the day that you hear his voice, it doesn't matter your denomination, it doesn't matter your religion, the Lord is calling you, leave your seat, the Holy Ghost is speaking to many of you, leave your seat and come, keep appreciating them, we will wait for you, until the last person comes here, appreciate them, they are coming, from inside and outside, the Holy Ghost is telling you, it's time, it's time, for I am come, that we may have life and have it more abundantly. More abundantly. We are still waiting for you outside. The Holy Ghost is calling you. We are still waiting for you outside. The Holy Ghost is calling you. The Holy Ghost is calling you. The Holy Ghost is calling you. We are still waiting for you outside. The Holy Ghost is calling you. As you hear his voice, has it not your heart? This can be a new beginning. There's joy in heaven. There's joy in heaven. Take advantage of this opportunity. God does not condemn you. It doesn't matter what you have done or not done. He's calling you to a relationship. appreciate all of you for taking the bold step of faith to come before the Lord. Hallelujah. Look at me. I want to assure you that this is the beginning of a new life and a new face. This is for you the greatest miracle. Hallelujah. It's my honor and my joy to lead you to the Lord Jesus. You'll be glad you did because this will be the beginning of the, an encounter. Many of you years to come. You'll be the one standing like this and ministering to others. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'd like you to say after me, dear Lord Jesus. Please say you're not reciting a poem. Mean it from your heart, okay? Mean it from your heart. Mean it from your heart. You're standing before his glorious presence. Hallelujah. And we're delighted to welcome you to the biggest family. This is what all of this is about. Hallelujah. Say after me, Lord Jesus. I declare that I'm unable to help myself. I believe that Jesus is Lord and I receive eternal life right now into my spirit. I declare that I'm born again. I'm a child of God. It's a new day for me. I denounce sin and Satan 
and I receive power to be called a child of God. Holy Spirit, live in me, build me, make me an ambassador of the kingdom in the name of Jesus. Let me tell you, friends, there's joy in heaven right now over your salvation. The word of the Lord tells us that there is joy over the salvation of one sinner. This for me is the biggest and the greatest miracle in this place. Hallelujah. Let me pray for you. Father, preserve them. Holy Spirit, we commend them to your loving arms. You are able, Lord, the greatest caretaker. You are able to build them, to equip them, to empower them, and to use them. I pray in the name of Jesus that this journey they have begun with you will last through eternity. I declare that none of you will fall by the wayside. In the blessed name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Thank you very much for making this bold decision. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray, pray, pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.